an Odyssey station. No score and a standing ovation for Bob Euchre in the radio booth. 54th home opener in his career, 90 years young. One of a kind, didn't he? One of one. This is Durden Sprague. As they avoid the turnover, this is Giddy. Crosses over, look at Embiid. A foot race with Holmgren backs contact, and Embiid headed back to the free throw line. With Andy Dirt Johnson and Brendan Sprague. Lefty on lefty. Yeah, it's hooked deep to right center field. No doubt about it. A three homer game. He caps it off with a grand slam. What a night to be Bryce Harper. Dirt and Sprague on 1080, The Fan. All right, 602 in the Rose City. Time for Dirt and Sprague on Portland's sports leader, 1080, The Fan. Happy hump day, everybody. How we doing? How we feeling? What is happening? I thought yesterday was an interesting day in the sports world, Andrew. Because it's when it's nice here, we all know that when it's nice here, we're going to want to get out and enjoy that weather. I mean, you got to take advantage of it. These days are few and far between in April and March in this time of year. And I was, um, I, you know, I eventually got to the point where I, me and Danny interviewed Chris Murray yesterday, the Blazers. Ah, okay. Really good guy, by the way, and sneaky idea for our show. Hmm. I don't know who I need to talk to in Chris's life. Maybe it's just Chris himself. <laughs> I, next year, if we can figure it out logistically, I want to get Chris Murray on every week Oh, for movie review. A weekly movie review. He is a massive golf and movie guy. In fact, I'll throw this at you. Not only do I want to do a movie review with Chris Murray. We need to get him out on the course. He watches. He says he follows all the PGA stuff. I asked who his favorite golfers were. All he named were PGA, and I said, no, live. And he kind of awkwardly laughed. Ooh, okay. He's a traditionalist. He's not a, taking the money. Yeah, he's a traditionalist. All right, he's up in my book now. I was worried he was going to start with Tiger, and I was going to, ah, okay, yeah, everybody does that. But he liked Morikawa. <laughs> You know, he went right into some PGA guys that weren't Tiger Woods. Morikawa is his first name, huh? Well, he said Rory technically okay. first. All then right. Morikawa. He likes Ricky Fowler's redemption story. How do you not? He'd be a sneaky good Grip City golf podcast guest or golf in the Northwest if Swag is so choosing to wake him up at 8 a.m. I think we're on to something here. Uh, but I want to get him on once a week at some point next year to do just a, remu- a movie review. Don't even talk basketball with Chris Murray. No, we don't care. We don't need to talk NBA. No. I don't care. Three-point shot looks. I what did you that. think of Oppenheimer? <laughs> hmm? Well, he said he hasn't watched a movie recently. Oh, come on. What are we doing? You're on all these long flights and road trips and hanging out in hotels. You're a rookie. What are we doing, Chris Murray? He's a comic book movie guy. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, I'm out. I'm I'll, out. I was in for a while. Idea, yeah. I was in for a okay. while. Now I'm right. out. I'm, we're not doing the Marvel DC thing. What do you think of the new Super? Man, huh? No, du- Tuperman? <laughs> Tuperman. Did you call him Tuperman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think? Nah, nah, I'm out. I don't want to talk about man. <laughs> Take me anywhere. I'm still fresh. I wow. mean, if we're getting, like, good movie reviews, I'm all for it. Yeah. Like, what did you think of Dune 2? I kind of wanted to ask. We ran out of time, but I was like, you didn't want to go see? Dune 2 was pretty awesome, man. The acting was great. The sound and the scene, like, the picture I know that sounds not like a great selling point for a movie. <laughs> the sound, the Dude, picture. Dude, it really is. You just sit there. It's such an experience with the sounds of that movie. And the movie mm-hmm. itself were really good. That was my argument for Revenant in theaters. Like, at least it was very aesthetically pleasing. I'll give you that. The movie sure. kind of sucked, but yeah. you're like, you're out in the wilderness, and there's bears eating people, and it's like, whoa, <laughs> this is crazy. People falling off cliffs. You're like, wow, this is kind of, it's a cool movie to see in theaters. If you watch it at home, you're like, eh, eh. I'm not, you know, we talked about that yesterday. I'm not a fan of the movie, but I do enjoy the scenes where Leo's just overlooking the landscape in his <laughs> bear skin. He's like, shivering. <sighs> His breath just comes out. You're like, oh, it's so cold where he's at. He's actually eating a raw fish right now. No, but I, I was thinking yesterday, so the day is winding down. The sun is starting to set. I had a really pathetic old man, very white suburban moment on Uh-oh. my back deck as I'm grilling steak. <sighs> I looked at the sun. It had beamed between my neighbor's house and a tree. <laughs> it was setting. So once it went down, I wouldn't see it again. Yeah. And I kind of waved at it. I put my left hand up like, I'll see you again, pal. 
<laughs> Thank you. It'll happen again, I promise. And actually, look, I made the proclamation last Friday. Why not? We're rolling the dice. Uh, spring slash summer officially here. I already made that in February. I'm feeling pretty good about. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Like, like it's gonna cool off a little bit. We're gonna get a little bit of rain. But if you look at the next seven days, next it's Tuesday, it's actually, Wednesday, it's actually backed off from it's where it not was terrible. earlier. Yeah, there's yeah. some like 65 and cloudy, 70 and cloud. I saw cloudy, 71 like, Tuesday or Wednesday yeah. next. I'm just, week. Perfectly fine. I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with All you. Right. Just get me away from the cold rain. I can take a little bit of dry, a little bit of cooler. I, th- this is perfect weather for April. I I just I I hate to tell you this because I know it's your thing. <laughs> your prediction. Doesn't count. I already gave it in February. No, you don't get to supersede yeah, and I, trump I my do. prediction. It doesn't I do. happen. This I do. is my this is my yeah. thing. I can't come in and do dos minutos when you're not here. You can if you want. You trademarked the segment. I would yeah. get sued. Your lawyers would get in touch with mine, and now my uh, people are going to get in touch with your people. Mm, you're talking about a you once a year steal. prediction versus a weekly segment <laughs> you on radio. You can't steal my bit. That's my bit, man. You were gone. What did you want me to do? Yeah. The weather was great. Well, it was great. You should have checked with the source, okay? You got to <laughs> check with me. For, if you would have sent me a text and said, hey, Dirt, is it okay if we call it? Okay. I'm the Steve Kornacki at the big board. You got to get the people in the back room to call it and give you the thumbs up. But what if Kornacki and election night this year are our hellscape of election night? <laughs> what if Kornacki becomes sick the night before with COVID? Uh-oh. Are, is the next guy that's Kornacki on CNN or wherever? You think they is, have a Kornacki That's bullpen? NBC. NBC, NBC has Kornacki. MSNBC, NBC, whatever. Is the guy <laughs> behind Kornacki going to go, hey, Steve, I'm about to do another live hit. I think he would. Would you agree with my map reading right now? I do. I think he would. There's the no way that guy's is, Kornacki. Can he wear, There's can no he wear way. the khakis? Yeah, you gotta or have does khakis. he have to wear something Sleeves different? got to be rolled up above yeah. the elbows. There's no way that guy's got Kornacki skills. What's she wearing? <laughs> no chance. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dirt's kind of weirding Jackers. me out this morning because he's, he's got the sweater and the mustache, and it's some weird combination of Ted Lasso and Ron Swanson <laughs> working this morning. Oh, I'd argue you look like... Uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. I think that's a really good one. Can I throw one in the ring? Sure. So with the mustache and the color of the sweater, I would say you look like a late 90s <laughs> uh, anti-woke tennis instructor that ah. makes every woman yeah, I mean, under on. the age of 17 feel very uncomfortable yeah. in lessons. I don't need your pronouns. Get them out of here. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, well, they yeah. <laughs> won't be returning that serve yeah. if you do what I say. He, him should send the ball back over here. Okay? Let's focus on our lesson, all right? That would hey, actually honey, be... can you go ahead and bend over just a little bit? you got to get a little <laughs> bit lower for that back hit. Just a little bit lower. There we go. Now we're talking. That would be a great skit. <laughs> it's it's all in the hips. The guy from the 90s in the that can't quite get past what he used to say out loud, <laughs> yeah. and he's trying to get in with the woke crowd at lessons for sporting events. <laughs> the time traveler from 1993 that lands in 2020. 23 and just doesn't fit into society anymore. Just catch the fastball from <laughs> bang them, okay? <laughs> and then you throw down to she hurt. My dad has moments like that as a 70 year old. I think everybody's dad does. Where he's like, he still teaches from time to time. And like, uh, he's a college professor, but very part time now. But he has that now where he's like, I, I got to be careful. I, I'm not used to this. This is all new to me. I lived my life 65 years one way, basically. Oh, I know. Yeah. Now the world's totally different. And when you're when you're talking to kids in the class and you're calling names, you got to be really careful about the things that you're saying. Yeah, I, I I can only imagine what that's like in front of a class. I um I volunteered recently at a program and I had to go to a high school for it, and I I was not prepared in any way. <laughs> there was seven of us. And so the high school kids come in and we're supposed to individually stand up. <laughs> we're supposed to say our name, what our job is, mm-hmm. and our pronouns. <laughs> and I I I'd never been in anything like that where you have to no. say I'm a what, guy. what I, your pronoun I, I, Yeah, I, I'm a man. I don't and know. I <laughs> I'm also not one of those like I'm not used to it. I don't use it. But I'm bothered by it. It's like, okay, whatever, whatever you need. Yeah. Whatever. I, do. I don't, I don't care. Whatever you need. Yeah. yeah, whatever you need. You do whatever you want. I'm just sprag. <laughs> I, I would go. I'm swag. Yeah. Just, I'm swag. I work yeah. in radio. Just, I'm swag. Yeah. Whatever you make of that, there you go. I'm what? sprag. Yeah, I'm an idiot, and I have the best takes of all time. Either way, I'll go with anything you want. But. I was not prepared for the pronoun thing. <laughs> you drop a he, him at the end? Uh, well, yeah. I was like, wait a minute. What do, I don't want to screw this up. What and, are my pronouns? Yeah. <laughs> and the, the gal before me said she, them. And so like that mentally threw me off. And I was like, wait, am he, I a he, them? Him, well, them? 
so I did also didn't know what that meant either. The I, she yeah. them. That one would have thrown me to I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I wait, was like, wait, sorry. I we're was singular, thinking. but we're plural. Yeah. But we're So what I've no. been told by this, because I asked this question to the right person. I think everybody per- has a person in their life they could ask this question to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I asked this question to the right person, and they said, well, when they do a he or she and then a them or they, it's basically their way of saying they're fluid, but they can go by either one. Like, they're not offended by either one. They're saying you can go them, they, or you can go she, her. Wow. Okay. And I kind of... I'm so old. My only response was, I think if you... If you give me that scenario, I'm more confused. Nobody's going with them. They, <laughs> yes, they're going she, her. Yeah, every yeah. time, right? I'm very confused. Yeah, I, you lost me there. Well, I it wasn't mine. I'm in the woods. There's trees. I was the, he him, and I, I made it. I, I was quick and to the point. He him. I, I don't Speaking know. Speaking of in the woods, how was the golf game yesterday? <laughs> oh God, it was delightful. That's why <laughs> I was like, get me out of this pronoun <laughs> conversation. Yeah, right let's now. not get fired at six ten and six ten a.m. on a Wednesday morning for being offensive to. <laughs> Everybody, these uh, are real world experiences. I know. Okay, I know. I I would have had the same reaction that you had. I would have been. I so, panicked. I don't know what to say. Just let me pay the tab. I'm I, paying for everybody. Yeah, I mean, You're all welcome at my table. I, I I'm not angry with anybody. I love everybody. I don't care what you are, but I don't know what. That to feel pretty good. It feel, felt great. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. I have no expectations this summer. Good. You I am out of the like. I get it. I'm gonna suck. My golf game's going in the crapper. It's okay. I'm I'm accepting of that. Just getting out of the house for four hours felt absolutely amazing. Tell your Klamath Falls trip. And, well, yeah, we got to gear up for that. That's uh, at the end of June. We'll get <laughs> now out. we care, don't now we? Now we yeah. care. In June yeah. we'll care. In April uh, we don't care. It's too early in the year. Does anybody? And I kind of meant to get to this at the beginning, and I somehow got sidetracked. Does anybody in our city or state, <laughs> with that day and that weather, yeah, does anybody know that Bryce Harper had three home runs and six ribbies <laughs> no, yesterday? No, nobody. Right. The only thing I saw from Bryce Harper was he threw it around the infield when there was a runner on base, <laughs> and he made fun of himself after the game. I didn't see that. Yeah, there was a guy on second, and he they made they there was like a ground out. He caught it at first base for the second out of the inning. Yeah, and he went. He just threw it to the shortstop, <laughs> and the shortstop was like, "What are you doing, dude?" And they crook made fun of him after the game. He was like, "Yeah, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I was thinking." Yeah, that was all that I saw from that game. I just I was watching um what's the MLB Central or MLB Tonight, whatever yeah. it was, your just, nightly show. Yeah, to see what what had happened in the game of baseball that night, and uh, I had seen that three. Three home runs with six ribbies, and I literally said out loud by myself in my living room, nobody in Portland saw it. <laughs> too nice. No. Dude, there was a no-hitter in baseball two days ago, and we didn't even talk about it on the show yesterday. I didn't know it happened until you told me post-show. <laughs> What's the name of the guy? Astros guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah don't exactly. look it up. Yeah. Don't look it up. No, don't I look it up. I read it in my updates yesterday, you and did, I've already all day. forgotten yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I think the no-hitter has gone the way of the triple-double. It's like, well, it was his eighth career start. He got called. He found out he was making the major league like roster on Tuesday. Come on, how many no hitters have been achieved by somebody in a sub ten start career? Yeah, exactly. That's. I mean, that kind of tells me what I need to know about that. Well, it's just amazing that the it's a first year manager that he let him go. Who is their manager? Oh, all the way to the end. Yeah, that I don't know either. We don't know the Astros manager. No. Did Dusty Baker retire? Yes, yeah, he did. He hung him up. Oh. Okay. I would, uh, I would, you know, how I, I watched the end of it too. I, I saw the what was going on. That makes it worse for you than it yeah. does for us. I'm just old. I can't retain anything anymore. You know, Isaac and Suk do the backup quarterback game. If you did the MLB manager game, I would maybe get five. Maybe. Oh, that'd be a fun game to play. Who I, could yeah. the, I mean, swag would win. You and I would have to compete. You beat me. I, you, my knowledge is not that good. On random managers, well, pl- I'll there's be a lot with you. of there's a lot of managers that switched teams this last year too. Yeah, so, I know. Well, so like to the household Cubs. names that moved around, like he to them or like real teams <laughs> they, they switched. Yeah, okay, all right. It was they to them, they them. Yeah, uh, I like council to the Cubs. I remember. I could give you that. That was a big deal. Yeah. Stephen Vote. I could give you for Cleveland because yep. I love. I always loved him as a player, and I remember when he got hired. I was he just like, played. Ah, he just retired. Just retired. I can name my manager. I can, I can name all three of our managers because yep. those are easy. Scott Service in Seattle. Here, here's go. one. I'll give this to you, and I. This is how I know you'll beat me. Hmm. I have already forgotten the manager of one of the teams in the World Series. 
Who's Terry t- Lavolo? There you go. Yeah, I would have never found that name in my brain. Yeah, yeah. Bochi, Texas, you yeah, can name. I would have got that. The old Cardinal manager is in uh, San Diego, right? She's a Schilt. Schilt. That's a yeah. key. you got to say that one you slowly. Beat me. You've beat Mike me. Schilt. You've beat me. Mike Schilt. Okay. I, you've beaten me. Is that all I got? Yeah. Okay. You could go eight other teams if you want. I won't guess. Them. I think that's about all I got. Well, Aaron Boone's still there with the Yanks. That's right. Boone's still in Who's, Philly. who's the Blue Jays manager? <laughs> is oh. it Showalter in Baltimore? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> he was last in New York. Feels like he was last in Baltimore for me. <laughs> he got turf. I don't know where he is now. Managers and NBA coaches, you know it when you see it when they're really good, but like <laughs> yes. middle of the road to bad, they could just be the same person to me. Yeah. Well, NHL coaches, that revolving door is even oh, faster. Guys get fired left and right. Why all the time. even? Like, I st- I'm still like on. John Tortorella's coaching somewhere. I just don't know which team it <laughs> He's is. He's yelling year. at somebody about something. He's very angry at his press conference. Is Scotty Bowman still in Detroit? Uh, no, okay. Scotty is retired. <laughs> Scotty <laughs> Bowman. Hell yeah, dude. He's retired. Uh, by the way, the Astros manager, Joe Espada. Ah, there you I go. Love Joe Espada. That's a fun name to say. Of the Espada family. Yeah. It's fun. I like that. Uh, all right. Well, we got a busy show today. We got Max Chadwick of PFF College and NFL Draft coverage at 7 a.m. So we'll dive back in. I have a football take to throw at you very quickly. I think I've settled who I'm most in on two quarterbacks wise in the NFL draft. Okay. Caleb Williams and Penix. Penix is your number two. I love Penix. I, I, yeah, I've been I fighting it him. a little bit. The age, the injuries. It's okay, we all know deep down you're a husky. It's all right. <laughs> deep got, down, I'm fat. Deep deep down, you got some purple in that body. Hey, I, got I think family you're, ties uh, to it. I think you're deep a he down. Them. I'm, I'm what? Fat. You're a he them. You got a little purple <laughs> in there. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I'll go either way. <laughs> you get your beaver one day, you're a husky the other. It is a busy show. A sad day for my uh, my Oregon State Beavers yesterday. Just yeah crushing and not the thing that was crushing to me that was maybe crushing to a lot of other people there was a lot there was one thing that crushed me far more than the other Hmm. on all the bad stuff that happened for oregon state the only good thing that happened was that they swept gonzaga in baseball they did i saw that that was it (laughs) that's all you got going bad gloomy day yesterday (laughs) we got statter story i've got a nfl candy bar game i want to play with dirt and we got nfl zigger zag loaded show dirt and sprague let's get it going on the fan
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. All right, welcome back in. Dirt and Sprague with you on this hump day. We'll get to Statter Story Day 15. Max Chadwick of PFF at 7. So we'll uh, touch on some NFL stuff uh, at 645 as well because we'll have NFL Zigger Zag. It is a Wednesday. And so I've got a Zigger Zag list that I want to get to. I'm going to try to play a fun game with you. Okay. Uh, the NBA candy bar. Ooh. And I don't know how that's going to go. I love candy bars. Do you? I do. The little fun size ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Somebody brought a bag of those over for Easter. And now we just have a big bag of candy sitting on the counter and I'm, uh, I'm munching. I was pretty proud of myself. I didn't eat any candy on Easter. No candy. No. No chocolate. Usually I'll grab like four of those Reese's eggs. I mean, how do you not? They're delightful. Yeah, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to watch the figure. Well, look at you. Aren't you just special? No, I said I'm trying. <laughs> I didn't say I was special. I said I'm trying. I can't pass. Those are out there. Like I don't so ever good. I don't ever buy candy on my own. So when they just randomly show up at the house, you're like, yeah, this is delightful. Yeah, you know, they show cups of sugar, and it gives you an idea. And it, I don't want to see it. I don't next see to it. it is the can. I don't want to see it. The can of soda, and yeah. they're like, this is how much sugar's in this can. Yeah. I'd like to see that, but with the peanut butter of Reese's versus, no. like, real authentic peanut butter. <laughs> How much sugary their peanut butter <laughs> yeah. is as opposed to normal peanut butter. They're, they're, what is the percentage of real peanut butter you think in that? It's got to be less than 4%. It has to be. Not a lot of real peanut butter in there. I, I'm of the mindset, I don't want to know. I don't want. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know. I know it's bad for me. I don't need to know how bad for me it is because yeah. I already know it's bad for me. It's like hot dogs. Like, that's, that's a pig butt. I, I know what a hot dog is. Yeah. I know the process of making a hot dog is horrible. I still like hot dogs, and I'm going to continue to eat hot dogs. How can you not like a glizzy? <laughs> they're, they're delightful on yeah. a sunny day. You throw them on the grill. You're at a ballpark. You're making the turn at a golf course. I don't care if it's a pig's butthole. I like hot dogs. Good for you. Don't pull that. I, I think we should. Uh, Victor Winbanyama yesterday. Speaking of things people didn't see because they were enjoying nice weather. <laughs> Any place for the Spurs. <laughs> Spurs, <laughs> who have 18 wins this year. Uh, the Spurs lost to the Nuggets, and that's of no real significance to anybody. Well, like, it kind of is for Portland. We're trying to chase them down. They know what they're doing, but we're trying. We're only a game behind San Antonio. Uh, I think Victor's got about two more games. He's getting <laughs> shut down for their final four. Uh, Victor, he didn't shoot the ball particularly well, but his stat line was 23, 9 blocks, 8 <laughs> assists, and 15 rebounds. He almost had a quadruple double. How long is it going to take for that to become a significant wound in this city? It already is. I mean, I know it already if is. If you've watched anything at all, and I know not everybody's a league pass person. He's averaging 21 and 10 as a 20-year-old. And how many blocks? Three? <laughs> three and 3.7. He's probably going to win Defensive Player of the Year next year. Yeah. If his yeah. team wasn't so damn bad, he'd probably <laughs> win it this year over Gobert. I, I, I'm I'm not kidding when I say this, because watching this game, I had this on on League Pass on my iPad. What he can do makes even Jokic go, damn it, man. I <laughs> When Jokic is kind of shrugging <laughs> shoulders, and Jokic was amazing yesterday. He had 42 points. Yeah. But he made him look stupid. He had four blocks on Jokic. I just say that guy, I will be stunned if he's not in the Western Conference Finals in two years. You think it'll happen that from a team standpoint, it'll happen that quickly? Pop and the Spurs have this reputation. They've built things. They've developed guys. Victor is bucking some of this through the media. You've heard this noise. Ramona Shelburne, how long does he really want to not win for? Hey, I want to win every game I play. I care a lot. Rudy better enjoy the defensive player of the year now because I'm taking it. Like, this kid's not, he's not cocky, but he's just... So confident. How would you not be if you're seven foot four and you can dribble and shoot the way that he does? He played for a team in France. I heard this from Windhorst a while ago. He played for a team in France and they didn't give him enough minutes. So he left and he basically created his own team. <laughs> and he became the star of the team. It was that the team he was on last year. The yeah. I forget what their names were. I saw a highlight reminder of him yesterday on that team taking a, a three, missing it, and put back dunking yes. his own missed three. I <laughs> I may or may not have pleasured myself in the draft process watching that highlight, thinking what that's like in a Blazer uniform. I mean, it's you should not be able to do that. I just, they have to make a big move. Go sign Donovan Mitchell this summer. Yeah, go get somebody. Somebody will want to play with this guy. This guy is going to win, and he's going to win quick. This, to me, 
it will be trouble for Greg Popovich, and that sounds crazy. But remember, Darren Williams drove Jerry Sloan out of the NBA. <laughs> he did. So it this could be danger territory if they tell him, oh, we're going to suck again because Cooper flags in the draw. Yeah. Cooper flag. I'm Victor Winbanyama. Yeah, I don't face. need a Cooper flag. No, we can go spend money on the rest of the roster. I'm going to be good enough. I mean, how long until this guy's averaging like 30, 10, and 10? It like might it, be next year. Feels like he's heading in that direction. I, I'm glad you brought this up. This is a nice opening of a fresh wound that I haven't thought about since last June on lottery night and draft night because it was that close. And I'll never forget the feeling and the when when those envelopes were getting open at the dais by the deputy commissioner, whoever does it. There, there was a moment. There were like as that thing was building up, you thought this. Oh my God, this could happen. Because I think Portland had, what, the sixth worth odds somewhere six, in there? Six, yeah, I think that's it. And then six came, your name didn't call. Five came, your name didn't call. Four came, your name didn't get called. And it felt like this this is going to be our – finally, something is going to go our way. And then you find out afterwards you were one ping pong ball away and you ended up with a guard who can't shoot in an NBA in which you need to shoot. So I'm glad we didn't get that guy. What position do people largely say, hey, if you put a guy that's really good at this spot, would he it'd be next level for him? <laughs> So happens to just be point guard. I wonder if Portland had one of those at one point. That would have been awesome. <laughs> With Victor Wimanyama. If I'm Ant, like if you're Anthony God. Simons, are you not demanding a trade? And are you not secretly, because publicly this doesn't go well for guys? We just saw this with Dame. Yeah, send me to San Antonio. Yeah, are you not telling Joe like, hey. See if the Spurs really want me and how bad they want me because I want to go there. Team me up with that guy. Jokic had a really funny line after the game, too, I saw when I was scrolling stuff last night where he basically said he threatened him. He was like, dude, if you block one more shot of mine, I'm going <laughs> to. And then he and then he had like a funny pause as everybody chuckled. And he was like, then he blocked four more shots of mine. And so I can't really say anything. It just looks unfair. It is unfair. And he's in the I already NBA. hate him. I already hate you him. You hate him? I hate him. Oh, man. Dude, he's seven foot four. It's cheap. It's, I don't like. Ta- it's just dumb. I don't like the size thing. He's. If Bull Bull didn't smoke so much weed, he'd be Victor Wimbanyama. Yeah. Could have been an organ duck. What are we doing? Uh, I'm, out, I'm out on Wimbanyama. Screw San Antonio. Did you just say that Victor could have been an organ duck? No. Bull Bull, organ duck. Yeah, we okay. could have had our own Victor yeah, Wimbanyama. No, could have no. dominated the tournament. No, Dane only... Altman, shout out. No. Dude, no. Of all the teams that he could have gone, I maybe would have liked Victor Wimbanyama if he went to a team that I was at least, it was like passable to root for. What if it was the Wizards? Uh, I mean, the Wizards haven't harmed me at all in my life. They have been irrelevant my entire existence, and so uh, it's kind of an irrelevant franchise, but I would at least be accepting of that. And he's in the Eastern Conference. I'm still holding on to a Jordan Crawford buzzer beater I saw at a Buffalo Wild Wings once. <laughs> F the Wizards. Still, still hurts you. It still hurts me to this day. <laughs> it's real to me, damn it. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's stick in the association. We'll get to the NFL uh, at 645 with NFL Zigger Zag. Match Chadwick on some NFL draft stuff at 7. Uh Let's play a fun game. NBA Candy Bar, next on The Fan. Now, now, from The Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on The Fan, Trailblazers in an interesting spot tonight in Charlotte, trying to end a 10 game losing streak, but facing a Hornets team that's just one game behind them in the standings with the fourth worst record in the NBA. In the quest for more ping pong balls, tip set for 4 o'clock on Root Sports Plus. Blazers one and a half point underdogs. The specter of playing in the West Coast Conference not appealing to all the Oregon State basketball players. Top names on the men's and women's teams hitting the transfer portal. Talia Van Olhoffen coming off an Elite Eight run will seek a new school, as will men's leading scorer Jordan Pope. Voters in Jackson County, Missouri voting down a sales tax extension that would have helped finance a new Royal Stadium and major renovations to Arrowhead Stadium for the Chiefs, now putting the two Kansas City teams in play for possible relocation. The Oregon Ducks baseball team securing their 20th win of the season with a 7-4 victory at Portland Tuesday night. They'll start a weekend series at UCLA on Friday while the second-ranked Oregon State squad completed a two-game sweep of Gonzaga 13-5. Beavers will host Arizona State this weekend in Corvallis. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigart from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. The original home of the herd with Colin Cowherd. Weekdays 9 to noon.
Now let me holla at you, partner. This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080, The Fan. Dirt, we've been doing this a long time. I would say in radio terms a long time. Yeah, we're going on 10, 11, 12 years. I, I don't even know anymore. Uh, and if there's anything I've learned with long relationships, sometimes you got to try new things to make it fresh and hot. you got to spice it up, man. you got to bring out the, the handcuffs, maybe a little leather, maybe a whip. I was talking about radio. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I... But in radio, the Some fun nipple thing. Nipple tassels. Okay, all right. Well, play with those. Now you're just being horny at 630. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to do this a while ago, but I just kind of forgot. And then I remembered yesterday as I watched some NBA. Mm. And so I wanted to play an NBA game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a scenario. Oh. It's very similar to the NFL Secret Zag, you could okay. say. And I got to pick a candy bar here? Uh, no, oh. I'm going with one of the goat jingles of all time. So I'll give you a scenario <laughs> and say, like, the Blazers have the fourth pick. Dirt? What would you do? What would you do with the fourth overall pick? Yeah, like that's an example of how okay. to play the game. Okay, does that okay. make sense? I think I'm following here. Does, does can you hear this? What would you do? I can. Okay. Yes, I can. Can you think of a better candy bar jingle? Because I can't. For a Klondike bar, everybody knows that one. Um, a better candy bar jingle? No, I don't think so. Do any other candy bars have jingles that I'm not aware of? No, I don't. Reese's. So. Reese's. They just say Reese's over and over Reese's. again. Reese's. Reese's. I mean, you don't need a jingle for that candy bar. No, Butterfinger is uh, like uh, the alien stole your Butterfinger. Get your finger off my Butterfinger. Lay your. Lay, get your finger. No, better. Nobody better lay a finger um, on my uh, Butterfinger. Yeah, so that's not really a jingle. Not really. So, no. yeah, but also Klondike bars suck. But I'm okay with the jingle. Okay, I'm let, ready. Let's start with the 76ers. <laughs> what would you do? They beat the uh, Thunder last night, 108-105. Oh, that. Everybody's fired up. Nice little comeback for him. Maxie's having a good year. Embiid made his return from his meniscus <laughs> surgery in a monster game. Now the face of Skechers, too, by the way. Shout out to Joel Embiid. Hey, you know what? Whatever keeps him upright and his knees healthy, I'm all for. I'm old. I want some slip-ons. Uh, the Right now, the Sixers are slated in the 7-8 play-in game, I believe, against the Miami Heat. The El Heat. Yes. And there's a scenario where they finish with a seven or eight seed. And so that means Boston or Milwaukee. And I know Milwaukee lost to the Wizards last night. We'll get to that at 642 <laughs> or 43, depending on when we break. But Joel Embiid has not gotten out of the second round in his Philadelphia career. No, he has not. If the 76ers lose in round one as a seven or eight seed, which wouldn't, I believe, shock anybody. No. Dirt. You do? <laughs> if you're Joel Embiid. <laughs> I like it. The jingle. It plays. Uh, I'm getting the hell out of there. I'm getting the hell out of Philly. I, I don't know how many more years you need. He is 30 years old. Even um, with Maxi, huh? Even with Maxi. I think Maxi's a fine player. Is Maxi a number two option on a championship winning team? I would say no right now, but let's allow a playoff, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll give them a, I'll let them have a run in the playoffs. Um and a lot of their season has been derailed because of the Embiid injury, so I get that. Like they I think the I want to say they're like 20 games over 500 when Embiid plays. It's something crazy. And they can't win games without him. So they've just tanked in the standings and he's back now they come back and win. I like he's been there for nearly a decade. He's going on 30-31. He has a long line of injury concerns. Um, I wouldn't be the most trustworthy in the guy calling the shots in Philadelphia and Daryl Morey. The whole James Harden thing kind of blew up in their face. It failed. They got bounced again in the playoffs. Um, he's made bad coaching hires. Maybe, again, that changes this year. Uh, but the Doc Rivers thing clearly didn't work out. And so if I'm Joel Embiid, I'm out of there. Like, my clock on my career is ticking, and I'm getting to that point where if if winning is what's most important to me, it's not going to happen in Philadelphia. And I think he has, what, one more year left on his contract? I believe that's it. There's also a rumor he put his house up. And so I, you, you have the, you're at the idea of being an expiring, so you can threaten, like, hey, I'm going to leave in free agency if you don't get rid of me. Or you just give it one more year, maybe see if I'm healthy, and then you bounce. But my my internal clock is ticking if I'm Joel Embiid. Is there a team for Joel Embiid, top oh, of your head? God. That makes sense? I mean, I hate to say it, but I don't know what Golden State's financial situation is, but to go team up with Steph, I know everybody in the oh. NBA wants to do that. Oh, I like that, actually. Um, that, that's a sneaky one, because Golden State... They're going to get off the Draymond deal. They're not going to pay Clay Thompson. You're freeing I up know. money left and right. Yeah. So you still probably... Maybe you keep Wiggins around, some of the other young guys. No, you, you, you trade Wiggins. Get rid you got to get the deal off the books. I'm um, looking around the league. Elsewhere, I... God, Joel and Steph would be great. I don't know what Dallas's financial situation is, but you obviously have the guard pieces in place, and so he would be the final touch there. I mean, no disrespect when I say this to you. That was brilliant. Thank you. Golden State might be the spot 
to go to because they're trying to pivot out of their depoy who's annoying. Yes, and Steph Curry is still an elite player at a very yes. high level, and he's got a long ro- uh, uh, road to go. Uh, let's go to Miami, another team at the bottom. I mentioned they'll play seven Philadelphia right now. I believe they are slated to play in the play-in game. Correct you are. Seven and eight, Miami, Philly. There you go. The rival of our Portland Trailblazers, the hated <laughs> Miami Heat. Not really, but okay. Well, they kind of are right now. Uh <laughs> They're one game back of six. They're a, a game and a half up ahead, or a game now maybe, of, of Philadelphia for eight. They're a game and a half up on Philly. I don't subscribe. The heat culture thing is obviously real in some ways. <laughs> like last year was incredibly fluky. Uh, Jimmy Butler's awesome in the postseason, no doubt. I'm not putting any stock that they're doing that again. I don't believe they're that kind of team. No. If they lose in round one, they're an interesting team from an age standpoint. Dirt, if Miami loses in round one. What would you do? Like, if just the heat in general? Would yeah. I blow it up? What would you do in Miami? Oh, God. Windhorse is saying that something's smelling with Jimmy Butler right now. I mean, he's kind of a funky dude, and I wouldn't be shocked if he was disgruntled by the way that season ended. I don't think I would blow it up, though. I, I don't know exactly the ins and outs of why they're the seventh seed this year. I know they haven't been a great regular season team. I agree with you completely that last year in the playoffs, it was an absolute fluke, and it was I, it's similar to NC State, right? Like, Miami should have lost their second play-in game and missed the playoffs altogether, and then they find themselves in an NBA Finals, mm. and they're clearly overmatched. But they're a couple of minutes away from not even making the playoffs at all. And it's funny how different history looks if that does take place. Now you see why they were so desperate for Damian Lillard. They knew that they weren't good enough to run it all back. But Jaime Hawkes has had a pretty good rookie season, and so you can bring him along for another year. I don't know if they've been decimated by injuries. I'm sure they have some contracts coming off the books. I Because they've been in the finals twice in the last four years, and because of the player that Jimmy Butler is in the playoffs, I don't think I'm blowing that up quite yet. You just keep running this back. I, I, it's a weird mix of old but young. It is a very weird mix. There's a faith in Butler when he gets to the postseason that he's going to have some of those crazy performances. What is he, 33 or 34? Let me pull he's it up. Getting, he's starting to kind of creep up there. He is. He is. Uh, but I think if you – I mean, it's are, are you ready for an all-out rebuild in Miami? Also, it hurts to lose a playoff, Jimmy. It does. You he's don't 34 lose. years old, Jimmy Butler is. Dude, that's – I know what LeBron is doing is insane, but he'll be 35 by the time next season tips off. He was born in September. Doesn't I mean the history of the league just tells us this is kind of the end of it that. tells me that you got maybe two more years left. A really good. You're high-end nearing basketball. the finish line. You got maybe two more years left, and I think for that reason, if I'm Miami, like I, the thing about Miami that they always have going for them, and this is why I it's funny that we try and make fun of them, like. Miami will go get the next guy when Butler's done and they move on from Bam or whatever their next moves are. It's Miami. Yeah. They're going to be okay. And so I don't think, like, if this was a smaller, like, let's say this is Indiana, or let's say this is Cleveland, and you're like, hey, we kind of lucked into this, we made the finals, we have a good roster, let's see how, all right, that's that's run its course, maybe we should get all the assets we can for these pieces before they get too old. I don't have that thought if, my, if, if I'm Miami. I have Pat Riley, I have one of the best, if not the best, head coach in the NBA, like, we'll be okay, we'll get free agents, we'll be fine. Alex Crawford's L.A. Clippers have been a very up-and-down team this year. They lost last night, and more concerning is Kawhi Leonard reportedly flew back to L.A. He has to have his knee examined. Uh-oh. My God. Whoa. Uh, obviously, they're they're sitting in the four. They're two up on Dallas. They traded their lives for Kawhi and Paul. Well, not Kawhi, but they get Kawhi, and then they trade everything for Paul George. They've yep. now traded more for James Harden. If the Clippers come up short of an NBA Finals, mm. because I'm tired of this, like, well, they made the West Final. N- they didn't give up every asset imaginable no. to just get to a West Finals. If the Clippers come up short of the NBA Finals dirt, in LA, you can't do anything. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they when does their new building open up next, next year? Next year, like, you can't. You don't move off of Paul George. <laughs> no, I don't. You think give you James Harden like yeah. a three year max I deal. The James Harden thing, I don't know because I forgot he's a free agent. I yeah. don't know if I would pay him. But they're not in a. They're already nobody cares about them to begin with in LA, and they have two of the best players in the league, three of the faces of the league, and I, do they? I mean. I mean, I, this I would is say a like weird team of now. recognizable names in the NBA. I would still say Kawhi, Paul George, and James Harden are in the top fifteen ish of guys, right? They have the goat, and they got you know Kawhi and James Harden to put around the goat and Paul George. <laughs> That's right. 
But when you're opening a new building, you don't have a choice, man. You got to sell tickets. You can't move off these guys. You're going to start a rebuild the year you're opening like a $10 billion stadium in Inglewood in which you're going to struggle to pack with fans because nobody cares about the Clippers down there despite the success in the roster that you've built. Like, you, you don't have a choice. The Harden thing, that's a different equation. Let's see how he does in the playoffs. I imagine he's going to choke again because he chokes every year. And so I don't mind moving on from him. I didn't really understand that move to begin with. But of all the teams that have pressure on them, Boston and, and L.A. are like a 1A, 1B, just depending on your opinion and flip-flopping them. Uh, if either of them don't make the NBA Finals, you're you're looking in the mirror and sobbing for the owner or the GM. He is going to look back, I think, unless he wins a championship, and then this will all age very badly. I just, that dude's from Seattle. He claimed to care about having the Sonics back. He bought an NBA team by going to an ATM machine, and it was right there. He could have just said, I'm bringing the Clippers out of L.A. because L.A. doesn't need two teams. This is stupid. Here's the Sonics. Nobody cares about them anyways down and there. He built a new arena that's going to be half full <laughs> most seasons. <laughs> like an all-time. Yeah, now I'm just thinking about the gif of him on the stage going crazy. Developers, developers, yeah, developers, just developers. Screaming and yes. fist pumping at everybody. Have fun having this entire thing fall apart in like two years and then having a half full arena. Yes. And I, maybe he's always going to be able to go make big moves because he's Balmer and he's got a. And it's know, LA. An explosive personality. But I, I feel like I, I, there, there should have to be a deep dive. Like, let's say they fail this year. I don't think they're going to blow it up. They got a new arena coming. I think they keep that thing together as long as they can. But let's say this team never reaches an NBA Finals. I need a 30 for 30 on what's going on. Me there. too. Like, I know that injuries were a part of it. You mentioned the conference finals that year. Kawhi didn't play in the play. I think he got hurt in the first round or whatever. So yep. he was out. But they made it to a conference finals. Is it a leadership thing? Like, it's just, just like a Kawhi's weird and he's not a leader and there's not somebody in that locker room. I know we've had the stories the last couple of years about those guys getting special treatment and taking certain days off mm -hmm. and the other guys in the locker room being upset about that. Like, we need a, 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 a diagram of what the hell happened here because when this all got teamed up, the thought process was nobody's beating that team. When this happened, when they signed Kawhi and then traded for Paul George, I'll never forget it. It happened at like two o'clock in the morning, and I was still awake because we weren't doing mornings at the time. And it was like the NBA world exploded. Like, oh my, Kawhi and Paul Kawhi had just won a championship. Paul George was at the one of the peaks of his career. Nobody's beating this team, and they've been to one conference finals. It's a big disappointment for sure. Uh, there's our NBA candy bar. Klondike edition. What would you do? Not eat a Klondike bar because they suck. You don't like Klondikes? No. I love mint. See, I'm out on... Uh, I like Klondike bars. I like mint and gum. Yeah, okay. Not all a right. dessert. Oh, I love mint ice cream, too. <laughs> oh, God. Mint cupcakes. No. I'm no. all in on mint. Mint cupcakes? The hell's the matter with you? NFL Zigger Zag is next on The Fan. <laughs> the Herd with...
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. All right, we got Max Chadwick of PFF.com coming up on the NFL Draft at 7. Sad day for my beeves yesterday. Tough day for the, the athletic department. I got some thoughts on that. Do you? I got all sorts of thoughts. Hmm. We'll get to that. We got Statter Story to get to today at 8.15 as well. People um, are saying, by the way, Kit Kat, best yeah, I forgot. candy bar jingle. It's, I mean, come on. I, Give uh, me a break. Uh, Kit Kat's Give the goat. Uh, you can't top Kit Kat. That's a good one. Bring me up a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Do they still do the commercial? I feel like I haven't heard or seen a new one lately. I don't feel like I've seen a Kit Kat commercial in a long time. Yeah. I love Kit Kats, though. The dark chocolate with the mint is fantastic. Ah, more mint, Get my the man. Mint, the mint out of here. You don't like mint sweets? I'm out on mint sweets. Wow. Out on mint sweets. Mint chocolate chip ice cream? Yeah. The green kind. I mean, of if it's like the only option that's available, like oh, I'll, wow. I'll tolerate it and I'll oh. eat it, but I'm not, if I'm going to like an ice cream shop, I'm not right. picking it out. Get out of here, Swigger. You don't like strawberries, okay? You can't criticize food taste. Strawberries are nasty. Uh, well, See, that's... Get out of here. Okay. No. He doesn't eat bananas. He doesn't like pickles. Swag, we're supposed to be on the same side. It's a bad take. It's okay to say that. I'm down with you in mint. Uh, Love mint. Thank you. Me and you will get down on some mint. Dirt, you're a fake fat. <laughs> you're a fake hey, fat. No, I'm not. You're, I'm a real fat. Your thoughts on sweets is maybe the most irrelevant one on the fan. You're a fake fat. Uh, I See, here's the thing, though. When sweets are in my house, I eat, I eat a lot of them. <laughs> Like, if they're just there and available. You don't like sweets, but out loud saying, look at this, look there. at that. It's like, hey, look at that. It's a little fun-sized candy bar. Oh, it's going to get so much worse it's when gone. Teddy gets older. They're just all over the house right now. I'm eating them left and right. You're going to have a little uh, remote control wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Flowing around Yeah, the house. this is your fault, Swag. You've Came distracted up. me. You and your stupid mint takes. Let's uh, let's get to NFL Zigger Zag. We do it every Wednesday. I feel like I just took a test that I didn't study for. Now at least I get to take a test that I've studied for. So I'm excited about this segment. <laughs> I was a little nervous about doing back-to-back kind of, hey, Dirt, let's play a game. Yes, yeah, what are your opinions on things? <laughs> <laughs> You're catching on. Oh, I'll fire away, man. Uh, let's start. NFL win totals were released. Yes, they were. And I went through it. Not a lot surprised me. Two AFC teams, though, caught my eye. Oh, oh, oh. They have the exact same win total number. The Bills and the Bengals both have an over-under of 10 and a half. Dirt, hmm. zig or zag, the better bet is actually the Bills. <laughs> I'll zig on that. I'm going to zig on that for a couple of reasons. Going against your boy, Burrow? I mean, he's not really my boy, but I do like Joe Burrow. Uh, One, I think the AFC North has a good chance of being harder than the AFC East. I think Pittsburgh is always above 500 in a tough matchup. They've upgraded potentially a quarterback if Fields ends up starting. Uh, Cleveland made the playoffs with Joe Flacco last year. Hold on. (laughs) What what do you got? Are you throwing calling timeout already on my rant? Russ is better than Kenny Pickett. I mean, can we can we we can't agree on that? I mean, he is. I'm just I'm giving him a hard time. But I hope Fields ends up playing there. But Pittsburgh's (laughs) above 500. Yeah, and that's a tough matchup always. Cleveland made the damn playoffs last year with with Joe Flacco. Yeah, with a third string signed quarterback, not Watson. They get the Groper back. They're probably he's not any better than Joe Flacco, but they made the playoffs with Flacco. In Baltimore, damn near made the Super Bowl this year and has an MVP and was in the AFC title game. So that division is a gauntlet. I just Miami was a really fun story in the first half of the year, not so much in the second half of the year. Bad off season too. New England could be one of the worst teams in the NFL with a new head yeah, coach. They and will be. You got a, you got, you know, uh, 9-11 wasn't real. Aaron Rodgers coming out with a ruptured Achilles, and I, I don't know what to expect of the Jets. So, I'm. You could argue with me. You think Cincinnati's better than Buffalo, and I will agree with that take probably. But I think I, if I'm at a bet and over, I would probably go Bills. Also, don't forget Joe Burrow. Got to stay healthy. He's been in the NFL for four years, and two of the, or was it four years now? I think in two of the four years, he's played just a handful of games. CBS Sports released their list of the six new NFL playoff teams. By average, that's how many new ones the NFL gives us. Yes, that's why we love the league. One of many reasons. And on that list, there's two that stuck out. And I ask you, between the Seahawks and the Jets, zig or zag, the Jets make it to the playoffs. Instead of the Seahawks, if you had to pick the two, Who are you zigging or zagging on the Jets over the Seahawks, or is it the other way around in your mind? I would I would zig on the Jets making the playoffs over the Seahawks. More likely to more than the likely Seahawks. to. Um, I know I just question Aaron Rodgers, and I think it's totally fair to question Aaron Rodgers, but there's still something there. Um, I, the Seattle quarterback situation. I know they're probably going to draft one, and their fans want to see him do that. I, 
I just don't know what to make of Geno. I know they've you know, they brought in Hal from Washington, and we'll see if there's anything left in that tank. Like, okay, we're just trying the same, like, washed-up quarterback thing again to see if there's something there. It's a first-time head coach. I don't know how that adjustment's going to be. I don't think the Niners are going anywhere. I think the Rams are a playoff-caliber team, and Arizona is now going to have Kyler Murray back, so I don't think they're going to be great, but they're going to be better than they were last year if he stays healthy. And so I think that division is pr- a pretty tough gauntlet. And so I would, I would give the nod to what Aaron Rodgers has accomplished in his career over trusting whatever Seattle is doing right now. I think you made some really good points, but I have to trust the Jets as an organization and Aaron Rodgers, and those are two things I do not trust. I get it. We got the whole Woody Johnson yelling at Robert Sala thing. It didn't happen. It did happen. The Jets have a real late 90s vibe to me, and that was paper bags over the head. Like, I know they just got Hassan Reddick. They're trying to bolster the defense for their coach. They went and got what's uh, Mike Williams from the Chargers. I just, well, I don't trust that to stay healthy. I don't trust Rodgers. So. Uh, Last one, and then we'll go to Max Chadwick. AFC West is a tough division, but it's largely dominated by Mahomes. Yes. Let's move past him. Sean Payton and the Broncos are trying to tell you, we're not rebuilding. We're competing this year. Hey, look at us. The Chargers are restructuring and cutting salary, but they've got Jim Harbaugh. Zig or zag, Jim Harbaugh more likely to get his team to an AFC title game than Sean Payton in the AFC West. Like next year or no, just no, no, in no. the near future? In the near future between oh, I'll Harbaugh zig on and that all day. I'll all zig day. on that all day. Wow. Uh, I just uh, the quarterback situation. <laughs> Harbaugh hasn't been in the NFL for almost a decade. He has not. When was I mean Sean Payton? It didn't end well for him in New Orleans. A lot of early flame flame outs in the playoffs. Got he, to the title game against the Rams. He did, uh, and they got screwed by a bad call. I get that. That was a long time. That was that was Jared Goff Rams days. We're, I mean, we're turning back the clock here a little bit. Um, and he was supposed to be the savior of Russell Wilson. And how did that work out? Not very good. Who is the Denver Broncos quarterback for the next five years? I don't believe we know that yet. I'm taking the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh. They okay. have their, they have they are in cap hell. Next year's probably not going to be good for them. But of building a roster and understanding the ways to win and having a franchise quarterback in place, the mm. Chargers check those boxes at least. So I don't think it's happening anytime soon. But you tell me in the next five years who's more likely to get there, I would take the Chargers any day of the I, week. I'm not a fan of either team. I'm fascinated by the division. Mahomes a stranglehold on it. But yes. then, like, what do the Raiders do with Pierce? How does the Harbaugh-Herbert thing go? And can Sean Payton show the rest of the NFL world, I still got it. Still got it. And I can rebuild this thing right. Because Denver, for the most part, has been a pretty consistent organization. The last few years, though, have not smelled good there. No, I mean, I think you trust the structure of it. And they got new ownership. So, I'm, I mean, Denver's going to be fine. But you got to find that guy. You have to find – to compete with Patrick Mahomes in that division twice and to try and win that division and get home field advantage and go on a playoff run, like you're not doing it with bad quarterback play. Maybe the Raiders get it in the top ten. Maybe the Broncos get it at 12. Maybe they take a flyer on a guy. But until they answer that question, I'm not trusting either of them. Loaded second hour of the radio program. We kick it off with Max Chadwick of PFF diving into the NFL draft with him. Second hour on YouTube, 1080 The Fan, 99.5 HD2 is next. Hey, everybody.
Now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. Brought to you by the Portland Winterhawks Playoff Hockey's here. Reserve your tickets with the new Chase the Dream Playoff package or learn more at winterhawks.com. First on The Fan. Trailblazers in Charlotte tonight. Interesting spot. They're on a 10-game losing streak, but they're facing a Hornets team that's just one game behind them in the standings with the fourth worst record in the NBA in the quest for more ping pong balls. Four o'clock tip on Root Sports Plus. Blazers one and a half point underdogs. Voters in Jackson County, Missouri, voting down a sales tax extension that would have helped finance a new Royal Stadium and major renovations to Arrowhead Stadium for the Chiefs. And now both those uh, Kansas City teams are in play for a possible relocation. The Oregon Ducks baseball team securing their 20th win of the season, 7-4 over the Portland Pilots Tuesday. They'll start a weekend series at UCLA on Friday. Meanwhile, second-ranked Oregon State completed a two-game sweep of Gonzaga 13-5. The Beavers will host Arizona State this weekend in Corvallis. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigard for the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app. The fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. If you can't find the humor in today's NBA, you're doing it wrong. Heat Check with Trista Crick on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Dirt and Sprague. Holy crap. What happened? You got pink eye. With Andy Dirt Johnson. You and each other butterfly kisses or something? Ha uh, ha ha. Very funny. That's not how you get pink eye. You get it from poo particles making their way into your ocular cavities. And Brendan Sprague. I farted on Jason's pillow as a practical joke. He farted on Jonah's thinking it was mine and then eventually pink eyed my pillow. Um, not proud of any of this, but I think we've all for forgiven each other. Dirt and Sprague on 1080. You can get pink eye from farting in a pillow? Totally. That's awesome. The fan. All right, welcome back in. Hour number two. Dirt and Sprague here on 1080 The Fan, the Odyssey app. Uh, we have a lot to get into, but uh, we start the second hour with some NFL draft conversation. It's uh, rapidly approaching. We're really excited. A lot of local prospects from all of the local Pac-12 schools or now whatever conferences they're in that we all got to watch throughout their careers. Very curious to see where they all land. Max Chadwick, our good friend from PFF.com. You can find his work there. Joins us yet again. Good morning, Max. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you for hopping on. I, I want to start. Have you flipped or switched any opinions on any prospects or teams that might be looking at any of these prospects? Like, what's what's something you have flipped your opinion on in regards to the NFL draft throughout the last few weeks? Uh, good question. I, I try to stay as consistent as possible from the, uh, the college tape that I've watched. And obviously like as a college football analyst, I've, I've been watching tape the whole year. Um, so I haven't really drastically changed my opinions on, on, on any of the guys, but I would say the one guy that I'm, uh, I don't know if I'd change my opinion on him, but I think he's going to go a lot higher than where I expected him to go ri- originally during the season is Jason McCarthy, the, uh, quarterback from Michigan. I you know originally I thought he'd be, a mid to late first round pick. And now it sounds like he's not getting out of the top five or top 10. So um, I still think he should be a mid to late first round pick, but uh, it sounds like right now he's going to be the fourth quarterback off the board to maybe the Vikings if they trade up or, or someone else. But yeah, it sounds like he's going to be going a lot higher than where I expected during the season. I mean, it's kind of a tale as old as time, right? Of drafting quarterbacks too early because you're desperate. It's the most important position. And so you're, you're reaching and you're trying to find that guy. On that note, like I, I wouldn't be shocked if we end up seeing four or five of these guys go in the top ten. You get a run on them, especially if McCarthy goes in the top five. How many quarterbacks in your mind are like worthy? Have put the 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 tape out there? Have the measurables, the intangibles? All how many of them are worthy of being a top ten pick? Oh, top ten. That's uh, I would say definitely two. I think Caleb and Drake are are definitely worth top ten picks. Caleb Williams and Drake May. Uh, I would take Jaden Daniels probably in the top 10 as well. I think, you know, he's probably not a top 10 prospect, but uh, that obviously the positional importance uh, will push him up there. So I would say those three are definitely worthy of being top 10 picks. And I think you can make an argument for Jason McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., and Bo Nix 
Uh, they're, I think they're worthy of being first-round picks. I don't know about top ten, though, but yeah. I would definitely say that the three of Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, those are the three I, I'd be okay with taking the top ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a few mocks here, and McCarthy, as you mentioned, has certainly sprung up on a lot of the mock drafts. A lot of teams think the Minnesota Vikings are in love with him. They may trade into the top five and draft him. I, I want to ask you, Max, I think we're, we're kind of in lockstep in some ways on McCarthy. I still wouldn't want him in the first round at all. Can you explain this to me? I, I mean, I'm stupid not covering an NFL team guy. I, I feel like I have an okay idea of football. I've been watching it my whole life. I don't get the McCarthy stuff, but all of these teams or all of these pundits seem to be kind of saying a lot of the same stuff. He's shooting up. Oh, a lot of teams love him. <laughs> what, what, what am I missing on J.J. McCarthy that, to me, I question if he's even a first-round guy. The top ten stuff, I just – don't get it. You're going to be asked to be the franchise guy maybe in year one, if not halfway through year one. What am I missing on J.J. McCarthy that I, for some reason, just didn't see in college? Yeah, I think that's, a, that's an interesting question. And I don't see – I lean more towards your side. Like, I, I think he's uh, – it'd be, I'd be less, uh, you know, upset with it if he was a second-round pick than I would if he's a top-10 pick. I mean, upset's not really the word to use there, but – you know, I, I'm kind of with you where I'm like, hey, I would take this guy mid to late first round, and I think top 10 is more egregious than uh, a second round pick would be for him, honestly. So uh, I, I think what NFL teams, though, see in him is that he's kind of like a ball of clay that they can mold into a potential franchise quarterback. I know he's a really, really great leader of a locker room. I, I've heard nothing but amazing things about him as a, as a person and as a teammate. And also he's got all the tools that you could want uh, in a quarterback. He's obviously got to put on some weight, and I think that'll, uh, that'll help him really unlock his arm talent even more. Um, but he's, listen, he just wasn't really asked to do a lot for Michigan this past year. I mean, they really relied on that run game, relied on their excellent defense. I mean, that Penn State game, he threw eight passes the entire game. They didn't throw a single pass in the second half. And that was a close game the entire game. It wasn't like it was a blowout either. Uh, so he just really wasn't relied on to do too much. It's kind of like an all ceiling pick that you're going with J.J. McCarthy. Don't get me wrong. When he was asked to throw the ball, like he was excellent. So I, I just don't think he was asked to carry an offense like – the other top quarterbacks in this draft were. And like you said, I mean, that's kind of a scary proposition when you're all of a sudden being thrust into the being the franchise signal caller for a team. And that, that's a little uh, scary for me when a guy hasn't really been asked to carry a team like that before. Yeah, that's a point that I agree completely with. Like, if you're Brock Purdy going late and you're just going to, hey, come be a part of our offense, maybe it's a fit. But if you're going to the top five, man, you're asked to be you're, – you're the focal point. You are the offense. Right. And so I, I'm with you on that one. Let, let's go to the wide receiver group. We have two guys here in the Northwest that I know a lot of folks are curious where they're going to end up with. I That position to me is fascinating. We know the importance of the NFL – the guys that are atop the class, like Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably going to be the first one. Malik Neighbors is maybe next. Roma Dunze. And then you go from there with Thomas or A.D. Mitchell all the way down to Troy Franklin. Is there a big enough separation that you feel like one of those guys is worth it in the top 10? Or do you look at it and say, man, like if I could get an A.D. Mitchell or a Troy Franklin at the end of the first round, I like that value better. How do you feel about the wide receiver room? I think uh, there's a pretty clear gap between the top three guys in this class and everyone else. It's still a really, really good receiver class overall, don't get me wrong. So if you don't get one of the top three guys, you can still get a really good player in the first round. But I think the top three of Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Roma Dunes, they, I think they're head and shoulders above everyone else in this draft right now. Uh, and I think those three would be wide receiver ones in a lot of other drafts. So, I mean, you got three legitimate, uh, really good, unbelievable receiver prospects. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is probably like a once-in-a-decade type of talent, and I think Malik Neighbors is right behind him, honestly. And then Roman Dunesday, like I said, would be a wide receiver one in, in a lot of other drafts that we've had recently. So uh, I would spend top ten picks on all three of those guys, and I, think, and I do think all three of those guys will end up being top ten picks, uh, and I think they're worth it, honestly. So there's still some really good options later in the first round if you still need a receiver, but like I said, I, I think those three are pretty clearly the top three receivers, and I, I think those are pretty clearly three guys that I would be surprised if they're not number one receivers in the NFL. Uh, a quick follow-up on that. Does does it, I, I don't bother, maybe not be the right word here, but like Harrison Jr. doing literally nothing, not talking, not working out, not doing a pro day, basically telling the NFL to piss off. Draft me if you like me. I'm not I'm not doing the, the dance the way everybody else does. Where does that sit with you? Where do you think it sits with NFL teams? No big deal. Who cares? He's so good. We'll take him fourth in Arizona because 
Neighbors and Odunze have both done things, I think, throughout this process that make a lot of other pundits say, you know, maybe, maybe they're better than this dude. Like, Odunze was doing the drill over and over and over again at the Combine because he refused to settle for a time. I love that. I love that a dude is that competitive. Maybe that doesn't matter in the NFL because Harrison Jr.'s, what, 6'4 and 220 pounds and has great hands. Where does the not trying to compete or showcase anything at all post the Ohio State career register for you? Yeah, listen, I love when guys work out because I love to get all these re- uh, registered times for them. So, obviously, like, I was a little disappointed that he didn't work out, but I'm not, I'm not going to hold that against him at all. I, I think – um, well, I think Malik Neighbors and Roman Dizer are playing catch up. Honestly, I think they're saying, "Hey, you know, I'm trying to get over Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. has, has basically everything to lose by working out. So I don't blame him at all for not doing anything, and I respect him honestly for saying, "Hey, my tape, my my tape is my tape, man. That, and that's the only thing you should be worried about because I was dominant on tape for two plus years. Uh, go check that out. And you know, nowadays I know people love the verified times that we get for these players." The, we have GPS tracking, and we have this at PFF, too. We have GPS tracking on all these players. You can actually say, like, in-game speed. Like, I, like one guy last year, Puka Nakua, didn't really run that fast of a 40. He was one of the fastest players we had in our tracking. Uh, and we kind of were like, hey, this guy should be going a little bit higher than where he's projected. And obviously, he had an unbelievable rookie year. Marvin Harrison Jr., GPS tracking, is, is an incredibly fast receiver. I think he's hit over 20 miles per hour multiple times, uh, which is a really, really fast. Uh, obviously, receiver for him, and especially as someone at six foot four. So, we have all these verifiable numbers in game that I don't really think it matters too much what he would have tested out as. And, and honestly, it only could have hurt him probably with where he's being projected right now. So, I don't really care at all uh, about that. And I think he's still worthy of being the the fourth overall pick, or maybe even higher if he is taken with the Patriots pick. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not really too worried about that at all. I don't really put any stock into him not working out. This is Max Chadwick, PFF.com. You can find his latest article on the 2024 NFL Draft, the top 10 interior offensive line prospects if everyone in college was eligible. That's where you can find his latest work. We did it with J.J. McCarthy, so staying away from him, Max. Is there a guy that you just, like, I just don't get it when you look at, like, the draft boards and where people are proje- uh, projecting players to go that you think is just, like, the value is not there? I don't understand it. And then on the flip side of that, is there somebody that you're looking at and saying, like, man, why is this guy not – to your Puka Nakua point, is there a guy out there that you think is maybe kind of a sleeper? Oh, good question. Uh, I'm trying to look at the consensus big board right now. Like, obviously, the J.J. McCarthy is one of them. That I think it's just a little bit too high for my liking. Uh, another guy that I think is probably going to go a little bit higher than at least I would take him um, is probably Dallas Turner, the edge defender from Alabama. I think he's a really good player and worthy of being a first-round pick. Don't get me wrong, but I think he's going to be the first defensive player off the board probably with the Atlanta Falcons pick at number eight overall. I don't know if I would take him in the top 10. I still really like him. I still think he's probably a top 20, top 25 player in this class, but I think top 10 uh, is a little rich for me. Um, I don't know, but I'm trying to think about like some like late round sleepers that, that can really break out like Puka Nakua, but one guy who still might be a first round pick uh, that I, I really like, honestly, is, uh, is Kool-Aid McKinstry. And he's a guy that a lot of people are kind of dropping to the second round right now. I still think he's the number one corner in this draft. And I know people might call me crazy for saying that because he's just an above-average athlete, whereas the other top corners in this class are all elite athletes. But, man, Cooley McKinstry has been, like, the best corner in college football for two years in a row now uh, in a Nick Saban defense as well. I, I don't really understand why he's being, you know, mocked late first round, early second round. Like, I still think he might be the top corner. And the other guy I would point out that's also probably going to be a first-round pick, but I think he should be going higher. Uh, Lyle Tulatu from UCLA was probably the best defensive player in college football this past year. I think he's the number one edge in this draft. Uh, and if the Falcons were going to take an edge at number eight, I would, I, I would take him, honestly. Mm. So those are two guys that I think still are going to be first-round picks. But they're not, like, obviously sleepers. Uh, but I think they deserve to go a lot higher than the late first-round, early second-round projections that we see for them right now. Uh, Max, I'll ask you one more. We'll let you go here. Um, quarterback. There's going to be a run on quarterbacks. Vegas is saying four quarterbacks within the top, like, six picks could potentially happen in this is offensive line the position in this draft that you think the non-quarterback teams can benefit the most from having these guys fall down? Because there's four or five of these guys, and a lot of them are local guys we got to watch in Pac-12 at Oregon, Oregon State, Washington. Are, is that the position in the draft that the other teams benefit because there's so much quarterback desperation that those offensive linemen fall? Or do we see other teams try to trade up to go get these offensive linemen and not hope that they slip to them? 
No, I think that's a great point. I think offensive line, the offensive line class this year is absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the best I've ever seen, honestly. And I think that and receiver. I, I think those are the two positions where if you need, if you don't need a quarterback and you could use a receiver or use an offensive lineman, you are looking your chops right now because, like I said, there are like there's probably could be six quarterbacks that go in the first round, maybe even six quarterbacks in the top 15 picks, uh, which I believe would set the record. So uh, I, I definitely think that teams that need an offensive lineman, I mean, there are like 10 offensive linemen that you could argue for being first round picks, maybe even more than that. Uh, and receivers is like eight or nine as well. So uh, I think there are some really good players that could be falling to the, the teens and the 20s, and, and teams would be very, very happy to get them. So, yeah, this, uh, this loaded quarterback class, in addition to a lot of teams needing a quarterback, could push some really, really good players down the board uh, and, and really work out for some teams that need a tackle or interior offensive lineman or even a wide receiver. Well, we always know it works out when teams get desperate and trade up to get quarterbacks. It always works out in the <laughs> NFL that way. Max Chadwick on Twitter, at Max Chadwick CFB, does a great job covering college football and the NFL draft for Pro Football Focus. Go find his latest article on the 2024 NFL Draft Top 10 Interior Offensive Line Prospects if everyone in college was eligible. Thanks for hopping on with us, Max. It's good to catch up with you. Uh, enjoy the draft process, and uh, we look forward to talking down the road. Of course. Thank you, guys. There we go. Good stuff from Max Chadwick of PFF.com. It is wild. The more that I read, the more mocks that I see, I think there's a really good chance the top four picks in the draft are quarterbacks. And I Good luck. Good luck. Yep. I, you, I, I'm not all the way in on Caleb. I understand the questions about Drake May. I wouldn't touch Jaden Daniels with a top ten pick. I wouldn't touch J.J. McCarthy with a top ten pick. But teams are desperate. What well, you're telling me, Washington at two is going to be like, yeah, let's trade out. Let's be let's be patient here. There's no chance in hell. And I have have fun with that, man. Uh, great news for some, maybe not so great news for others. That's next on the fan. It's the fan on demand.
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. All right, welcome back in. 723 on The Fan. I saw the um, Iowa LSU number was 12.3 million. That was pretty cool. Hot damn, that's a big number. Peaked at 16 million. Uh, that's an increase pretty significantly even from their title game a year ago. So the Caitlin Clark thing is taking off. I choose not to participate uh, in what that conversation largely becomes on the internet. I I think, and I've said this before, people who are pro watching women's hoops in any way, you don't have to like always throw it in people who don't watch his face and say, your sport sucks, look yeah. at this. Yeah. You can also, on the other side, just say, that's awesome. That's you, cool. You don't have to watch. You don't have to get angry about anything. You can just say, that's a cool thing. Somehow the middle ground doesn't exist in the internet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I choose not to well, participate. I just thought it was really a, a cool moment. I think it goes to show Caitlin one. Clark. <laughs> well, yeah. When yeah. you have stars, uh, everybody knew the narrative. Plus, I mean, ESPN has owned this. So there is something about, you know, ESPN is still where a lot of people go to to get their sports news sources yeah, so it's a when, number one outlet yeah and so when it is prevalent is it if it is at the top of what they're pushing in terms of sports centers uh, all their talk shows uh their their promotional commercials that they're putting out there it, when it's hard to avoid and you have stars and you have a storyline i don't think it matters if it's women's sports or men's sports or whatever people will gravitate to it I mean, 16 million peak is nuts that's so, nuts. So the, yeah. some of the things that it beat. Yeah. It's the most watched women's college basketball game ever. The mm-hmm. most wa- ma- watched women's basketball game ever. Yep. There's no WNBA games ever touched that. Uh, the 12.3 million average beat the average for the 2023 NBA Finals, beat the average for the 2023 World Series, beat the average for, they're not the average, but beat the Orange Bowl this year, beat the Big Ten Championship, the Pac-12 Championship, the Cotton Bowl, the Big 12 Championship. I think it beat every college ACC football game. ACC Championship. Except, and, yeah. Except for Michigan, Ohio State. Yep. That was the only one. And it beat the average of Thursday night football for the year. Yeah. Which is on it's a streamer, but still it's sure. the NFL and the NFL is king. Uh if you would have if you would have told me ten years ago that this would have happened, I would laugh at you. That sixteen million people at a peak moment are gonna watch a, a not a national championship game, an elite not a final four game, an elite eight game. Sixteen million peak, I would have said you're an idiot. That will never take place. I almost feel like I the other thing I have on Caitlin Clark, by the way, quickly. That's one of the most legendary athletic performances that I have ever seen. Oh, I I, I kind of felt like on the way home yesterday, we did it almost a disservice yeah. that we didn't talk about it enough of like, she she did a legendary historical <laughs> thing that like, we'll get some great players. Maybe Juju does this next year for USC. Like that was, talk about living up to the hype, man. For the biggest audience that has ever watched that sport. If she comes out and lays an egg and goes 2 of 14 and it's yeah. kind of an ugly game, people are turning it off, you're yeah. not getting that number. She put on a show, and a lot of people have viewed this, and I it's a apples to oranges comparison. I get it, but a lot of people have used the equivalence of like a magic and bird moment in the NBA. That they the NBA needed something to set them on the right course, something to grow them in popularity, and that obviously translated to Michael Jordan and the rest is history for what the league accomplished over the next twenty years. That to me is the interesting topic on this. Is like where do they go from here? A lot of this is Caitlin Clark. She is a, a star. huge part of it. Is She's Caitlin in State Clark. Farm commercials, like all of that. But still, you're getting 12.3 million to watch an elite elite eight game, and the USC UConn game. I want to say ended up with seven to almost, eight million, almost seven million. I think it was six point seven to six eight round. I call it seven million. That's a big number, and man. that started at nine o'clock Eastern Eastern time. time. That was yeah. a late well, game, nine thirty. Nine thirty. Yeah. So it's over in the, in the middle of the night, basically on the East Coast. Does this translate to the WNBA? How does the tournament capitalize on this? Like, is this truly a launching point or is it a one-off because of Caitlin Clark and the star that she is? I don't know the answer to those questions, but if you're somebody who's all for the growth of sports and, like, you having daughters, wanting them to have role models to look up to and have sports that they can watch that people are interested in and talking about and sold-out crowds, it's an awesome, awesome thing for for sports. Let's also not hide away from the obvious. It was it was black versus white, right? It was Angel Reese against Caitlin Clark. It was you can't see me last year, and yep. I'm going to drop 41 in your face this year. Yeah, it, That's a part of this as well. I, I just think we've reached such a stupid level of discourse on this conversation. Will it be $12 million in the next game? Or what about next year? 
I, I don't know, but seven million on the game after it for Paige Beckers and Juju Watkins is I would say maybe you'd laugh at that even ten years ago. Seven million people. Yes. It outrated. I mean, I, I think this is where it goes. The championship of the professional men's leagues, usually in our lives, has just held such a standard, right? It's beaten. That number beats 13 of the last 17 NBA Finals games. That's three years of NBA Finals games. <laughs> yeah. And it beat that many games. I don't even know what what, what it is for the World Series either because it's going to blow the World Series out. Probably. Out, I mean, NBA and baseball, kind of the same thing. They need certain teams to make it for it to get a certain number. And if they don't, well, you get the Denver-Miami numbers yeah. is what you get. Uh, but I, I thought it was great. And this weekend, uh, Friday, for example, NC State, South Carolina, I think is going to be a big dud of a game. Like, if you don't watch a second, you won't miss anything. South Carolina will win that game by 20, where they should. UConn, Iowa, I know Paige Beckers isn't quite Angel Reese and LSU and Kim Mulkey. She was supposed to be Caitlin Clark yeah. before Caitlin Clark, and she got hurt. And Caitlin Clark, by the way, has a Photoshopped picture of her in a UConn uniform that somebody made two years ago on her wall. That's how much she wanted to go to UConn, and Gino refused to show up for any scouting. Gino said in the post game, I'm glad she had an enemy. She didn't like them. She doesn't have anything on me. And then instantly the story came out that her and her family were begging UConn. Yes, please. She wants you. Please. And he did. He was the only coach not to show up to recruit her. And so I'm like, Gino, buddy, this is not aging well. It's She's going to want to seek revenge on you, too. I love that we've also reached, and it's a badge of honor that women's basketball, especially at the collegiate level, should wear, that we've reached the dumb goat debates. And they're now continuing this week. Like Rebecca Lobo was on ESPN yesterday, I guess, saying that she can't, she, if she, even if she only wins one title, she can't be the goat. She's got to win multiple titles. She'll never be the greatest college Lobo basketball Lobo said that? Lobo was on this oh, rant. Man. And everybody's like, dude, you, you have better players around you. Name one <laughs> other player on Iowa. Nobody can. I can't name anybody else on the roster. It's a good program, but like, get the hell out. The fact that you've now reached the, that level of dumb discourse, you've made it as a sport. I know, I agree with you, that. You have, yes. you have reached the promised land. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. I think if you get that or you get the opposite where it's like the traditional male viewer who doesn't care about women's hoops and they want to bash it anytime they can because God forbid you compare it to anything that they care about and watch. How dare you. I think when you reach these two levels of discourse, goat and then Oh, no one cares. <laughs> yeah. I think you've made it. I think that's the point where you've actually made it as a sport. You've arrived, ladies basketball. You've arrived. My only qu follow-up question to this, and you guys might know more than me, and I know we're against it. Yeah. When Does this translate to the WNBA? I think it's a possibility that she can carry over some of this. Okay. She's going to be in the perfect market for her. White Indiana is going to get Caitlin Clark. It, Vegas is great because they've won championships. Seattle's been pretty good. You need to create some of the rivalry stuff in the WNBA and Nesquew in New York. Does Angel Reese come out this year too? She still has one more year. If she I wants haven't to come heard back. her declare. So if she or not. comes out and goes to yeah, get a rivalry going. A in the rivalry NBA. going. Yeah. Now you've got something. Cardozo was coming out from South Carolina yep. as well. This is, uh, I mean, I think Beckers is going to be in it next year too. So yeah, so there's a potential, and and they need to figure out how to capitalize on it. And if there's ever a time for expansion, now is the time for expansion. Where I just to me, it's fascinating the disconnect. The most viewed WNBA game of all time, mm -hmm. according I just looked this up, Sports Business Journal was last year in the WNBA Finals, Vegas versus New York. Yeah. You know what the number was? Most viewed WNBA game of all time. Yeah. Game uh, four of the finals. 1.7 million. 889,000. Yeah. Wasn't Where, that a, what is the disconnect between college? Like, how do you get 12 million in college? Well, I mean, here's, well, here's, it's, it's her. September, it's, isn't it's, it? It's, well, well, that's what I'm saying. It like, is, is she, but it's her. She, so maybe it's she time is, of the month. She is female. Time of the year. Everybody has said it, and it's not something that's stupid. She's Steph Curry. She plays the game like Steph Curry, and when you can hit shots from that far and you can do this, man, you're carrying a team. Iowa's a good program. Lobo and, and everybody else that doesn't call her the GOAT, okay, whatever, I don't want to get to the GOAT stuff, <laughs> but, like, Iowa was never getting to a Final Four, and she's done it twice in back-to-back -back years. This is – it's her. It is her. It helps to have rivalries and coaches you are polarizing like Mulkey, but – it's her, man. Hmm. And so if she can live up and be Steph in the WNBA the way Steph was from college to the pros, I don't think I don't know if it gets to 12, 
but it certainly, I think, raises it from, what did you say, sub-million viewers? 889,000, and that was up 124% from Game 4 of the finals the year before. So their ratings are going in the right direction. They're going in the right direction. The regular million, yeah. season ends in the middle of September, so your playoffs are late September, early October. And they also don't tough. have a lot of teams. Why don't you look at that calendar? Why don't you move it up a little bit? Have your have your finals in August. I don't disagree with you. Like, why would you want to go head to head with football? Football, you, you football, shouldn't. and you we shouldn't. can't compete with football. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> Nobody can compete with that. Uh, it's a good number. Kudos to women's Dude, basketball. It's awesome, it's great, man. It's amazing. Uh, we have a lot to get to. Uh, Statter story at eight fifteen. We're back with more dirt and Sprague. But first, swag with the sports update. Now, now from the fan sports desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, Trailblazers find themselves in an interesting spot tonight in Charlotte. They're trying to end a 10-game losing streak, but they're taking on a Hornets team that's just one game behind them in the standings for the fourth worst record in the NBA as both try to put more ping pong balls uh, in their pockets. Four o'clock tip on Root Sports Plus. Blazers one and a half point underdogs. The specter of playing in the West Coast Conference not appealing to all the Oregon State basketball players. Top names for both the men's and women's teams hitting the transfer portal. Talia Van Olhoffen coming off an Elite Eight run. Will seek a new school as well as men's leading scorer Jordan Pope. The Chiefs and Royals did not get voters in Jackson County, Missouri to help them out. A extension of an existing sales tax was voted down that would have helped finance new and renovated stadiums and now puts it in play for possible relocation. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigart from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. The Fan is live on YouTube and Twitch. And
Network on 1080 The Fan. All right, welcome back in. 738, Satter Story coming up in the final hour. I got some NFL tidbits I want to get to, including one pleasantly surprising story and a random stat that I found interesting. Um, Let's get to the rough day for your athletic programs yesterday, though. Uh, Yeah. It was tough. It was a tough day for Beaver Fan on social media. Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's just get to it. Okay. Um, The one that shouldn't surprise anybody, uh, the men's basketball program is in disarray. And it has been since the Elite Eight run. I don't know where they're going. I don't know what the plan is. Jordan Pope has really been the only good player on their team the last two years. And they, they had a kid this year that played well, Billado. He, I don't think he is in the portal. Okay. That was okay. He had stood out. But, yeah, Pope, largely, to your point, the best player. I believe uh, the Oregon State men's basketball program is down to six scholarship players at this point because half the team has now entered the portal. And Pope, who was an all-conference selection and a really good player. Stud. Surprised that he stuck around even after last year. But he did. He stuck around after last year. Uh, he is now entering the transfer portal. No surprise there. But I think it is just a further reminder of, like, what are we doing here? They might be – I swag would be more vested on this. They might be with this team and you throwing a couple random portal guys that nobody's heard of from schools that nobody watched. I When you lose a Jordan Pope, I just I, – who are you replacing with that? They might be the sixth or seventh best team in the WCC next year, which – that's not a good thing, in case you no, were curious. No, not a good thing. They're we not better than Gonzaga. We spent a lot of time making fun of that conference. They're not better. Yeah, we do. They're not they're better not than St. Mary's. Mary's. I don't think they're better than San Francisco. Probably not Santa Clara. Probably not Santa Clara. I, Pilots got a shot for a quality dub over there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The they, yeah. Didn't they beat them two years ago in Gill? We haven't played them for a while. Didn't you call a game that they won? Yeah, that was Terry Porter. That was okay, the year they went to the Elite Eight. Okay, two, three, four. They just <laughs> right. beat them not that long fi- ago. That's right. We all fired Tinkle. They lost yes. I think that was five years ago. <laughs> and we all fired him. That's right. And we should fire him again because, dear God, that I just you have no plan. There's no direction, and you're losing your best players. And the conference stuff and the, the every, everything else that's going on that we'll get to in a moment here. I think you can kind of point a finger to this is like what has happened to the university and the conference crumbling that has a direct hand in this. This was happening with the men's basketball program before the Pac-12 collapsed. There, there, there have been two good years under Wayne Tinkle. One of them is the most surprising outcome maybe in tournament history for me. The, how that team made an Elite Eight, I still don't know. Well, I mean... <laughs> It's, you get hot, hot Luck. at the right time. I mean, let's just be honest. That was Luck not a good basketball team. They no. lost to the Portland Pilots that year. That was not no. a good team. But they somehow made the Elite Eight, and it bought him all sorts of goodwill. They have been a disaster since then. Disaster. Literally yes. every season has yeah. been a disaster. And this was all before the Pac-12 crumbled. Now the con- the conference has crumbled on top of it. Yeah. I just that that one wasn't shocking. Still hurts because Jordan Pope is a really good player. I'm really curious to see where he ends up. Um, Von Olhoffen entering the portal from the women's team. That that struck a nerve yesterday. I just I was scrolling. I got home from golf and I was scrolling just to see, you know, what did I miss? What's going on? And I I stumble across that. And in the for you, there's all the Beaver Twitter is all over the place. And some people very angry, some people very accepting, uh, some people very hurt. What what was the reaction when you saw the news? I love that your for you section is angry Beaver fan. I wonder how that got aggregated <laughs> into your algorithm. It's all you I see, sicko. man. Sicko. It's all I see. Uh, look, I. I don't care about the internet. I I just got said this about the women's ratings. Like I'm so done. There's no proper discourse. Yeah, it's the extreme of of either end of an argument. I don't care what idiots said on Twitter. Like whatever. I was not surprised by this. I don't know why people would have been angry. I thought there was a real vibe of she was gone at the end of the year with the way they were kind of acting about it. Hmm. Like Reagan Beers was openly crying on the podium when they lost basically thanking her. I mean, you knew if she, if you're making that, that was my first reaction. Like, dude, you played a game two days ago. Your season just ended. Yeah. And you're already coming out and saying you're transferring. You, you had your mind made up. A That's long what I'm time saying ago. is like, I think some of those players probably knew internally, like, yo, this is our ride with at least her. I'm not good luck to her. I hold no ill will to, towards any player that leaves. And for these reasons, it's clear. Like the WCC is not enticing to people. I mean, I have, you can certainly have your criticisms of Wayne Tinkle as a coach. God knows I do. Some of this is just like, what is he supposed to do? He has no infinite resource of money to keep kids. Jordan Pope's supposed to be a WCC player and just not be on a very good team and get knocked for that. I, I don't blame him. Her leaving is not shocking to me. What, what hurts of all of it, 
The men's program crumbling is the least shocking thing. Talia leaving doesn't surprise me. Nick Daschle has a report that more women are going to be following. And that's where it becomes devastating. Because I think the men's program should be valued and cared about. The women's program is carrying basketball right now for the university. They just got to an Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. The hope for most Beaver fans, I think, was like, okay, if we don't have one person back, at least we got all these others. They're all young. Uh, we'll see if Beers sticks around. If if it's Hunter, does she stay? She's a local prospect. She was an in-state recruit. She had a great freshman year. I just I, Gardner to me, a Gardner was a really good big who could go in and out. And I don't know. I that was to me the most devastating. I wasn't shocked by the men nor Talia, but uh, the rest of the women's team being decimated by transfer. I think it's a reminder again. I said it yesterday. Man, this WCC thing is crushing them. Everybody touts the money that they got in these lawsuits and whatnot. They're not going to spend that money. They're operating on a broke-ass budget. They have no money in this TV deal from the CW. Like, they're not just going to go openly spend all this money as if it's some easy dad fund that they have because their dad's the billionaire guy. They got to hold this much money as, as long as they can to keep all of these programs and teams up. Yeah. That's devastating. Losing more players from the women's team than just Talia would be devastating. What are your thoughts on this? Vancouver 4 text line is 503-864-6326. I got a couple thoughts on it I want to share. We'll see if Swag wants to jump in as well. It was a tough day, man. It was an emotional day for Beaver fans, and I don't blame them. The transfer portal stuff hits hard, especially coming off an Elite Eight run. We'll talk about that. Get back into the NFL coming up. Top of the hour. Back after this on The Fam. Who's stinking it up? Woo! Do not go in there. It's time for Who's Stinking It Up? A sports lowlight that's a uh, rip from the headlines. We couldn't do diddly poo. Brought to you by Three Mountains Plumbing. Schedule your appointment online at threemountainsplumbing.com. Pressure coming here for the box and the outlet pass. Kill game behind the defense and puts it in with eight seconds to go. That's going to do it. This Washington Wizards team has beat the Milwaukee Bucks tonight in D.C. Yikes. Bucks TV on the call there. Milwaukee, no Dame, but they did have Middleton. They did have Giannis, and they lost in Washington, who has openly been tanking on Yeah, them. Milwaukee to me, though, is the epitome of a team that none of this matters. Well, like, if, if they make it to the NBA Finals and win a championship, you're not going to remember that they lost to the Wizards on April 2nd. They're the two seed in the East. They're not going to get to the one seed. They have nothing to play for at this point in the season. I think they're coasting to the playoffs. They do stink it up on the road, and that's brought to you by Three Mountains Plumbing. Make plumbing and electrical services delightful. Get your time back with the pros tackle the projects you need completed. Schedule an appointment online, Three Mountains Plumbing. That's threemountainsplumbing.com. Hey, everybody. Sprague here. Have slow drains in your home? Whether it's the kitchen sink or bathroom shower, my friends at
Ward and Sprague crunch the hot topics you want to hear. What's the pressure? Don't sit here and act like there's no... We get nervous teeing off in front of a gallery on the 10th hole at Eastmoreland. Crunch Time, brought to you by Crunch Fitness, with memberships as low as $9.99 per month. Find your Crunch Time in Portland, Vancouver, and online at crunch.com. All right, Crunch Time, as always, brought to you by Crunch Fitness. The membership is as low as $9.99 per month. Find your Crunch Time in Portland, Vancouver, or online at crunch.com. We'll get to when does the new year begin at the top of the hour? Uh, January 1st. No, it does not. Are we talking about league league year? Wrong! (laughs) Okay. We'll get to some NFL stuff coming up in a moment. I I want to talk about this, though. So there was... reactions all over the board. I'm with you for the most part, social media. It's like, whatever, it's a cesspool and I don't like it. But I do think there's a lot of rational minded folks who had takes of varying degrees yesterday of dude, this, this isn't her fault. This is the system set this all up. Don't be upset with her. And there was a lot of Beaver fans who had the don't hit, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Like I don't blame either side for feeling the way that they feel. The transfer portal is very strange in that way. And when you get these messages of, like, once a beeve, always a beeve. Like, no, you're not. You're leaving. <laughs> you could have stayed and been always a beeve. Yeah, but she'll be back in 15 years for a celebration so of I that team. So I want to get to that in a moment. She'll be on the court. I know. I want to get to that in a moment because that is something I thought about yesterday. I My first reaction to this was, and I, I don't know if Beaver fans agree with this or not, the men's basketball stuff, totally get. Programs in disarray. You're going to the WCC. There's no hope. Get the hell out of there. Abandon ship. Don't blame anybody for that. Football, similar situation. You're going from playing in the Pac-12 to playing in the Mountain West. Your schedule's not great anymore. I know Damian Martinez is the outlier. For those guys that bounce, I don't blame any of them for doing it. This one kind of did surprise me, and maybe it's just because I didn't see the writing on the wall, to your point of some of the press conferences, but that's a loaded team that all could have come back. Yeah. And I, when I look at the modern transfer portal, one of the main reasons, and again, maybe I'm just out of touch on this, one of the main reasons that people go in the portal is, is for what? Financial benefit, right? Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to offer me X amount of money at, in, at insert big school. I have a chance to go get paid, and we usually can't blame anybody for wanting to go get a payday. Am I wrong? And th- Like, she's a good basketball player. I'm not trying to downgrade her at all. She was really good on that team. They went to the Elite Eight. Is she getting six figures in NIL money? Because I have a hard time believing that. So I think, so the the first point you made, I actually think it contradicts itself. I, you can feel however you want to feel about it. I can't change that. But if you're saying don't let the door hit you on the way out, it kind of just goes back to your, your first point. You just haven't liked the portal experience. Because we didn't see mass transfers Grad transfers once in a while were a thing. We didn't have this like this before. Mm -hmm. You haven't adjusted to it, or it's really bothered you, and that's okay. Again, feel how you feel, but I think it's because of the portal. I don't think both things are true. I think one is stemming from the other. She was the leader of the team. She was. Uh, Like, point blank, the leader of the team, and it's never easy to replace that person. I think the biggest misconception in the portal transfer stuff, the NIL world, is the idea of the money. Uh, there was a some who was it? Somebody told me last week. I think it was on Thursday, my last day, and somebody had suggested that rumors on the internet were saying Angel Reese was making ten million. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but like, no, we've heard this before, though. I like, know. oh, so and so's making like four point five, and it's like zero chance she's making ten million dollars. Okay, LSU football is not paying a kid I, ten million. I also think there's zero chance she's <laughs> making six figures. This isn't just about money, right? She's going because Sa- South Carolina might be calling. She's going because LSU might be online too. She's going because Duke, uh, with with Kara Lawson, could be saying, "Hey, we made an elite eight. Why don't you come over and be our final piece? You've graduated. She graduated from Oregon State, by the way. She got her degree in three years. Mm-hmm. She graduated. She gained experience. She helped rebuild the program up to tournament standards. Mm-hmm. I agree with the large point that they they would dominate the WCC next year, run rough shot, and could maybe get to a Final Four next season. But she's maybe going to get thirty thousand dollars. I had her on when you were gone. Mm-hmm. She had a big game winning shot. When you see jerseys for sale at your team st- uh, team store, those jerseys are usually at a set price, hundred to hundred fifty bucks, depending on the sport and player. You know why they're that expensive? Because they're giving a percentage of those those earnings to the player. Yeah, they cut to the kid. Reagan Beers is a sophomore. Her jersey was in the bookstore when we went. You know whose jersey wasn't and doesn't exist? <laughs> Talia Von Olhoffen, who was there for three years and is the leader of the team. And I jokingly said that to her, and she goes, oh, I didn't know I had a jersey. And that's stupid to many, 
her jersey being at insert big school mm-hmm. nets her infinitely more than she made. She jokingly made an NIL give me some business tweet during the tournament. So what that tells me is she was getting almost nothing. So I, it's not six figures. It's not this big ass payday. We don't none of these people make that money. No. She might be leaving for $15,000. She might be leaving for 20. She also might be leaving to have one more different college experience before she does whatever she does. I don't know how she rates as a WNBA player. She might be an inter- international player her whole career. But it's it's not this money thing. It's not driving it the way people think it is. Most of these players are not making even right. six figures. And that to me was why, and to your point, maybe fifteen grand is the only selling point that she needed, and that's all that it was. That to me was why I did have a hard time understanding it on the surface level, depending on what else follows. Like, if the dominoes do fall, that the entire roster basically ends up bouncing. Scott Ruick's like, dude, I want nothing to do with the WCC. I'm out of here, too. A lot of it will crystallize, and you'll say, okay, I get it now. Blow it up at that point. Right right at that point, (laughs) you're you're screwed. But I I don't know. I just, and, and again, maybe I'm on an island on this like I was with Pat Chun last week. For 15 grand... I don't know if I'm willing to do that. That's like, not a real number. I shouldn't have given I know, a number, I'm sure, but that's but, not real. But the larger point, though, is that she's not getting six figures in NIL money. Like, there's this boogeyman out there of NIL that people are like, see, we can't compete. Somebody's going to pay her. It's like, well, yeah, somebody might pay her, but she's not making six figures. It's not happening in that world for a women's basketball player that makes ten uh, scores 10 points and five rebounds a game. Like, if Caitlin Clark entered the portal last year, she would have brought home millions of dollars. For, you know, Haley Van Lith or whatever, some of these other big name stars who are recognizable figures potentially. But a, a player from Oregon State going to another, it's like she's not going to get a massive payday. And so I just, I, I viewed it as it's unique because you had the chance to bring that entire team back. The WCC in college basketball in general is a sport in which, multi, like, you don't have to be in a big conference to go on a tournament run. Gonzaga does this every year in men and women's basketball. They were just in, what, the Elite Eight, right? Then they make it to Portland. Gonzaga did. They're in the WCC. You would have competed against them head-to-head multiple times and in a conference tournament. You probably could schedule some decent out-of-conference games because you're a known commodity now in that sport. You can go to their place or play in a tournament or whatever. So you're going to have a chance to showcase yourself. And it just, to me, that was, it, I would be on the frustrated side of Beaver fan of saying, with that group coming back, if everybody else was graduating from that team and all the other good players were gone, it's like only her and one other girl left, then even that would make sense. But the chance to bring everybody back from an elite, elite eight team in a sport in which you're not really, the conference affiliation stuff's not the biggest deal in college hoops because anybody can go on a magical I, run in March. I think it is. I, I think what both men and women's programs told us is it is. How does Gonzaga build a winning team, though? That's the thing. Good coaching, great coaching. Scott Ruick's a great coach. Yeah. He is. He gave you a chance. He signed you to a scholarship. He found you out of nowhere in Eastern Washington, brought you down here, turned you into a, a key player on an Elite Eight team, mm-hmm. and then the first chance you get, it's like, dude, I'm out of here. The first sign of trouble, That's it's like, not I'm the out first, of here. She had a chance last year to do this when they didn't make the tournament and they were near the bottom. That's why they were picked 10th preseason. She stayed. She she put everything out there. Why She, she thanked Scott Ruick. She, she gave him his flowers. The team gave her her flowers. Sometimes these things just end. It's okay. Let me, I'll go that we're we're against it, but I'll say this. I don't know her actual reasons. I think it's dumb that she had to go to Twitter to say, you know, defend herself because there's eight people in mentions. I, I, we are reacting too much to Twitter in general. Mm -hmm. I know, I think you and I do from time to time react too much to Twitter. Uh, I don't think athletes should be responding to most stuff on Twitter. Who cares what? J- Jacob fifty five seven seven eight eight two says about you and why you're leaving. If you're leaving for your own reasons, then just be content with that. I'll ask you this, and I don't mean to make you look bad here, but I'm genuinely. What's the starting point guard on Gonzaga's team? I have no clue. You know who Haley Van Lith is. I do because she was in the Elite Eight. I had no clue who she was. A year she ago. might go to Duke. Von Ohoffen could go to Duke or Ohio State, and she's going to be probably near the top of a major conference on ESPN games, being highlighted in Big Ten tournaments or ACC tournaments, and then get an attorney, and you know the name. And sometimes that can be a thing for people, too. They got a girl this year, Kelsey Reese. She was a forward for them. She was a really good player for Utah. Utah's a good women's program. Why did she leave Utah for Oregon State? I don't know. 
but she did, and it was helpful. Sure. Sometimes it's it's a lot of different reasons why this happens. I just think a lot of this reaction, it's not even about Von, Von Hoff, and this is you're mad at your dad, not man, not at me. Yeah. Five players have entered the portal in the men's program. The men's program being an utter dumpster is a much bigger story. If Scott Ruick stays, I'm going to trust that he'll figure this out. It sucks. I'm sure he's not happy about it. But the men's program being what it is is a disaster. But what I'm learning more and more by the day, this stuff matters. Conference affiliation seems to have had an impact on all of this, does it not? Your football coach, your football team, your yeah. basketball program, your women's program. The only one that hasn't suffered is the baseball team because they're an independent and they're always in – you know, talks of the regional or Omaha. That to me, and that's the last thought I'll have on this. And we'll go, we'll get some news in the NFL. We got to get to, but that was the other thought I had was baseball is going to be independent. They're not going to be in a power conference. Pac-12 is a good baseball conference. They're not involved in that. Are we going to see a mass exodus from their baseball program? Because my answer to that is probably no. So why does that hold together? But a team that just went to the elite eight that was set up for a special run, not have that. What were the ratings of the Carl's world series game versus Caitlin Clark in Iowa? I mean, just, I hate to say this, but people are not watching that. Sure. I know, but that's all. Caitlin Clark's a major outlier. Like what were the ratings for Oregon state, South Carolina? Uh, I didn't see the number. But probably okay, maybe better than the College World Series. UConn and but, USC got seven million. Did the World Series? But beat it also that? had the lead in of Caitlin Clark. If that was not a lead in of Caitlin Clark, with sixteen okay. million people watching the end of that game. But you're you you you're playing against the game. But you get what my point is. Sure, people are largely not watching the College World Series. So I don't know no. how the baseball workings have operated with the portal window. Stuff. Yeah, I I, just, I don't blame anybody for being fresh. The men's basketball stuff I get. Conference affiliation stuff's a disaster. Uh, but it was a tough day for Oregon State, nonetheless. And let's get to some NFL stuff to start the final hour a big trade just went down we'll dive into that jim harbaugh funny clips a pleasant surprise sadder story coming up we'll be back after this on the fam hey it's swag back with you for my friend station now now from the fan sports desk a sports center update on 1080 the fan first on the fan trailblazers trying to end a 10 game losing streak in charlotte to face a hornet squad just one game behind them in the standings for the fourth worst record in the nba as 
Uh, they try to put more ping pong balls in their pockets. Tip set 4 o'clock on Root Sports Plus. Blazers one and a half point underdogs. According to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski this morning, Hornets head coach Steve Clifford informing his assistants he will step down at the end of the season. He's negotiating with the team for a front office position. Adam Schefter reporting the Bills are close to finalizing a trade with the Houston Texans that would include wide receiver Stephon Diggs. James Stephon's hat trick putting the Winterhawks in position to sweep the Victoria Royals out of the first round of the WHL playoffs after a 6-5 win to take a three games to none lead. Game four tonight, puck drop, 7.05 p.m. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigard from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. Tired of getting dinged by subscriptions? We won't send you a bill. Portland Sports Leader, 1080 The Fan. Last year, I spent more money on spilt liquor and bars from one side of this world to the other than you made. It's time for Dirt and Spring. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, gift stealing. Woo! With Andy Dirt Johnson and Brendan Spray. Wheel of dealing, limousine right, jet flying, son of a gun. Dirt and Spray on 1080. And I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. The Fan. Hey, let's do this. Final hour. Dirt and Spray here on Portland Sports Leader 1080 The Fan, 99.5 HD2, the Odyssey app. And live on YouTube, we went a little long in the last segment, yelling. People are texting me, NIL takes, transfer portal. Now, why don't you shut Be up. loyal, man. Be loyal. Okay, last take on this. I promise, <laughs> and then we'll move we on. massive breaking NFL news. It is big news. Uh, yeah, screw it. I won't get my last take in. Uh, I'm, big, I, I'm hurt by it, okay? It, yeah. it, it all sucks, but I... I just I wanted to bring up one other player quickly yeah, and just wanted, like you mentioned she'll be they'll honor that team in 15 years and and they definitely will they'll bring him back at some point we'll all be super old and gray and fuddy duddies. Ruick said it was his favorite team. Right, it it's was a big as deal. Good as any team he's ever had. Made it to the elite eight. It's a big deal. I know they've had a better year with Scott Ruick, but still that was came out of nowhere. Right, it's supposed to be tenth. The the tough part, and I think back to Anthony Newman with this is are you how much of your legacy is damaged by this and what if the next stop doesn't go great. So I was thinking about this on, was it Monday night that uh, Caitlin Clark came was? Was that Monday night? Yeah. Haley Van Lith is a name that I know. She's a, a good basketball player. I just knew her because she was on LSU. I guess she played at Louisville the last couple of years, but I didn't know much about her. But evidently she was a good player at Louisville. Big name when she entered the portal, she goes to LSU. People at Louisville were pissed off at her. How did her game go on Monday night? Well, here's the other part of that. <laughs> Nobody talked about it. She was hooked to an IV before the game. See, Why I did Mulkey clue. put her on Caitlin Clark if that was the case? It was a horrible game plan. She had a Terrible. disaster of a game. She has the shrug meme. She like, c- I can't do anything. So this girl's amazing. She's now vilified in Baton Rouge because they can't stand her for choking. Well, choking's not the right word, but having a horrible game in the biggest game of the year. Oh, she was the enemy? She, I think she, from LSU oh, fan, I think the coach. She was like 2 of 15. She yeah. got torched by Caitlin Clark. A lot of it was coaching, but she was horrible on Monday night she didn't have a good game and people in louisville are like dude screw you you left us so now she's a villain in louisville and lsu fans don't like her I, you can't <laughs> yeah but you can't operate on this stuff based on what fans are gonna There's say life after sports and you should keep your relationship in your community okay? i love that you used an anthony newman <laughs> reference of loyalty you like that and his thing of why leave when yeah. i could create anthony newman car dealerships everywhere exactly and i love q <laughs> but it's not that world. <laughs> and I, I would be willing to bet, I'll say this without asking him off the record, I wouldn't have been stunned if Anthony Newman did leave. <laughs> no, he would never. Yeah. He would never. Uh, big trade just went down in the National Football League. Eh. I mean, it's yeah, pretty, it's pretty decent size. Name-wise, yeah. Stephon Diggs from the Buffalo Bills has been traded to the Houston Texans in exchange for a... 2025 second round pick. Mm-hmm. The Texans are also getting a 2024 fifth round pick and a sixth round pick. So it's Diggs, a 2024 five, 2024 six for a 2025 second round pick. You following all that? So basically, Diggs for a second round pick in next year's NFL draft, not this year's NFL draft. 107 catches, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns this past season. Uh, he has had one, two, three, four, five, six great radio, six straight seasons of a thousand yards receiving. And Buffalo's now looking for a wide receiver one, and Houston has gotten another weapon for their young quarterback. Buffalo's looking for a couple receivers. Gabe Davis has also gone there, yeah. too. Um, Miami and Buffalo are fascinating with their off seasons, but I think people trust one more than the other because it's Josh Allen versus, yeah, two is good in the system, but. 
Is he worth a $200 million contract? It's a different conversation. Uh, this is a big trade in name. I'm not convinced this is a big trade from the player. I, I'm not even 100% certain he's the one in Houston now. I like the move for Houston. I don't know if I would have gone second, but I can't blame them. They have C.J. Stroud on a rookie deal. Let's give them all the weapons so we can get past the divisional round. Uh, here, here are his touchdown totals from November 13th till the divisional game against Kansas City at home. <laughs> zero, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Did you get all the zeros? I, there's a lot of zeros in there. He, at the back end of that season, fell off the map. I don't know if that's an Allen thing. I don't know if that's a separation issue. Great receiver on paper with numbers. Uh, I I saw a quarterback throw one of the greatest deep balls I've ever seen in my life in awful conditions. Yep. And it it banked off his hands like it hit a brick wall. Uh, he's loud. He will quote tweet you and try to dunk on you. I'd do without the attitude on the sidelines, making my quarterback look awful by screaming at him. Good luck in Houston. And I again, I get why Houston does this. They want to win, and they want to advance further than they did this year. They want to capitalize on the rookie contract. I can't fault them. I don't know if he's even the one in Houston now. Tank Dell, Nico Collins were really damn good for them last year before. I believe Dell got hurt. Yep. He just he to me he fell off significantly in Buffalo at the back end of that year. I feel like this was the most obvious thing coming. It hadn't happened yet, but this doesn't throw me through a loop to hear that Schefter's saying he's been traded. No, this has been boiling for two years. Remember the scene when they lost to Cincinnati last year in the divisional round on the sidelines and the shouting matches and yes. the throwing of helmets and it was it was an ugly end. He basically asked for a trade in camp and he remember did. we had Capaccio on. Yeah. And he was like, No, everything's okay. He should be in the facility tomorrow. I didn't feel like it was good then. No. And I love Sal. Sal's our guy. But from an outside perspective, it didn't smell right from that point. And he had a good start to the season. He did. Completely fell off from November to January. There was a video. Robert Griffin the third, a couple of days ago was doing a, I don't know if it's his podcast or whatever, but he was basically doing the topic of the Bills and Allen and Diggs and them together and do they need each other, that kind of thing. Somebody responded to the RG3 post of his podcast and said, does Josh Allen benefit from having a top-tier receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. Stephon Diggs, I don't this is a random person that responded. Stephon Diggs was not tagged in this tweet. He was not connected to this at all. Oh, he searches his name. Yeah. Found the tweet, yeah. responded to it saying, is he essential to his success? No, that's Diggs to Allen. Allen resp or excuse me, Diggs responded to the tweet saying, you sure? Question mark. So, I mean, this was 14 hours ago that he sent that, and then you find out that he was traded this morning. This has been boiling to your point for a while. He's one of those guys that I've always asked the question of, like, he's not a one. Is it worth it? He's not a one. Is he a one? No. You're paying him one money, and he's a headache. And yeah, there, yeah. when you're a wide receiver that's not, like, some of them you're willing to put up being a headache because you're so damn good that it's like, whatever, dude, you go do whatever you want. You're that talented, we'll put up with it. Diggs is a really good wide receiver. I don't want to doubt. He's six straight 1,000-yard seasons is, is awesome. He also has one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And he's going to go play for a really good one, a uh, good young one in Houston. I, when, but when you're becoming more of a distraction on the sideline and playoff losses and it's about me and not touching the ball and why am I not getting the ball, I want the football, give me the football, and it's not about the team and, and doing what's right to win games, I, I to me you're not worth the squeeze. And now the question I think that follows this up where does Buffalo go from here, man? Like we just I, we did a zigger zag on them earlier. I said I like their chances to win more games than the Bengals. You got to go get a wide receiver, As, unless they're all of a sudden going to turn into a run dominant team and they hire Jim Harbaugh and they're number one in rushing offense. Who are your weapons? I know the the young tight end from Utah had a really strong second half of the season. Kincaid. They have a 28th overall pick. Maybe there's a Troy Franklin there in your future. Back end of the first round, one of those other guys. Is he ready to be a number one? Back end of the first round receivers are a total crapshoot. Do you move up? I, you, got, you got to go find another weapon for him. I wasn't the biggest Diggs guy, and I haven't been since the end of his days in Minnesota. But I know Buffalo's going to have to have a corresponding move to this, and I'm fascinated to see what it is. His last 100-yard game receiving was October 13th. Yeah. There's no out of his 15th, contract, by the way. Me. He's got two more years left, and yeah. then you can get out of his contract. He, so he's, I, you're not getting out of that. I deal. think he could fit in well there, again, because of the other guys around him. They proved that they're dudes. 
And, you know, I Gabe Davis, in theory, seemed good. You know, kind of middle of the road to me, I think, is what we learned about Gabe Davis. And Diggs yeah. was supposed to be the one. Certainly started that way last year, and I don't know what happened. Not registering 100-yard game after October 15th. Yeah, you bringing that in, too, with a young quarterback. And what, what, I mean, how, how long does it take for one of these blow-ups to happen? Because he's not getting enough touches, right. and he's screaming at your second-year guy. Like, I, I like teams that are aggressive with quarterbacks on rookie deals. I understand that strategy. If I, there, there's a part of me, too, that I look at it from Houston's side that I'm like, is that the guy that I would want to go get? Uh, the other part of this, quickly, you mentioned the the running game. Are they going to bring Harbaugh? No. But what did they do when they fired Dorsey last year? And we thought it was going to be McDermott. Yeah, they ran the ball. They got it going. So Joe Brady's the OC. He's not this Jim Harbaugh run-centric guy, but they ran the ball significantly more. I tend to believe that was McDermott saying, yo. Hand the ball off. Yeah. I'm tired of dealing with interceptions. And I love Josh Allen. Yeah. But he certainly gives you a little. <laughs> <laughs> like when that, that ball's going and the that. camera hasn't panned to where he's throwing yet, <laughs> you're just like, don't let there be two other jerseys. <laughs> please, don't please, let there please. be no, two no, other no, jerseys. No, 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 no. And I don't know who they'll find in the draft or whatever. <laughs> but we've seen other teams get by okay and just like, did you? Okay. If we're all being honest, nobody picked Houston to make the playoffs. No. I had read some stuff on camp about Nico Collins and Tank Dell. Not a soul no. thought they would be what they were in year one with Stroud. So I think you can, Puka Nakua in L.A., mm-hmm. you can find guys. And I don't have to deal with the headache anymore. Might end up being a better thing for Buffalo. Comment at Vancouver for a text line. If Diggs isn't their wide receiver one, I could see him being more of a negative than a help to a young team. So see how it works I just out. don't think he's a one anymore, and I don't think people want to yeah. say it, but I think it's evident. It's 30 years old. The numbers fell off at the back half of last year. He's a bit of a headache. Uh, to Sprague's point, not a surprise that he got traded. Just it's whenever you see a big name like that get dealt. It's like, oh, look at that. A big name wide receiver getting moved. So Stephon Diggs traded to Houston essentially for a second-round pick in next year's draft. So the Bills are moving on uh, from Diggs, and we'll see where they go from here. The Texans add a weapon for the young quarterback. Let's get to stat or story. We'll do it next on the fam. Thanks to George McCoy and Warren.
you, Boom. <laughs> Break the news. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Is it a stat or a story? Evidence based on olfactory prowess is inadmissible, in case you didn't know. This is Stat or Story, a monumental judgment call with dirt and spray on 1080. Come on, don't mess. The fan. I got a couple other college hoops notes I want to get to and some other NFL notes as well. Pleasant surprise. Some fun with audio. What else I got in there? You know, I just want to highlight real quick. And a fun stat. Kugludes. It's funny because him and I are both Pac-2 alums. Yeah. It's just funny. Me and him have, like, I feel like (laughs) such a shared, realistic view of this. And he's like, why is Dirt carrying the water for the portal (laughs) and the NIL and the loyalty? I'm here, baby. I'm here. I'm a loyal guy. What do you want from me? I'll stand by you. I'm on the sinking ship. Let's do this, Kugludes. Uh, what do we got today in status story, Swag? First number is seven. Seven. Is it the number of teams that have made the NCAA Women's Final Four that were unranked in the AP preseason top 25 poll, as is the case with NC State? So, like, ever? Ever. Well, yeah, they're only... Forever. I mean, women's NCAA tournament started in, like, 84 or 3 or something. You said the men started in 83, so it'd be the same time as the men's. Well, that's when March Madness. Oh. The Madness. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Uh, or is it the number of Academy Awards for Best Musical Score that Alfred Newman has won most all time. It is National Film Score Day. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go stat. I'm going to go story. This is a stat. Damn it. Yes. According uh, to uh, stats and info here at ESPN, NC State is the seventh team to make the Final Four after being unranked in the AP preseason poll. The last one to do it was 2016, the Washington Huskies who lost in the national semifinal. Only 1993 Ohio State is the only team that actually won the title. The Lady Huskies made a Final Four in 2016? Yeah, when they had Kelsey Plum. I don't remember that at all. Who was the all-time leading career scorer until Caitlin Clark Ah, this year. How about that? Big fan. Big fan of Kelsey Plum. Point guard for your WNBA champion, the Las Aces. Vegas Aces. Aces. Also, Mrs. Darren Waller. Yes. That kid. Watch out for him in 18 to 24 years. I love an athlete. Maybe they'd still live in Vegas if they had invited McDaniel to the wedding. Although McDaniel, is he still there? No, he got turfed, didn't he? That's right. Antonio Pierce is their head coach now. <laughs> I love that you answered your own <laughs> question and worked yourself through that. I had to work through my problems. you got to show your math as you get to your answer. <laughs> Uh, no, Alfred Newman, born March 17th, 1900, died in February 1970. Oh, I was crushed when it happened. Had, Tough news. Uh, won the most uh, Academy Awards for scoring. Uh, the categories have changed over the years, but for uh, composing. Uh, he is the uncle of one Randy Newman. Oh, Randy Newman, yeah. Well uh, his nephew. Uh, he, yeah, nine uh, Oscars there. And he had over 40 nominations during his career. A lot of it was in the 40s and 50s. A lot had to do with uh, musicals that were adapted to movies, those sorts of things. Is Randy Newman still kicking? I think so. Yes. We'll go with the yes. Didn't he do the Toy Story theme? He's Toy Story. Yeah. You got a friend you in got me. You got a friend in me. I, I, Short Randy Newman. People. people know Randy Newman. I love He's, LA. Yeah. I love LA. Yeah. 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 But what's your favorite score of all time? What's mm. your favorite movie score? Ooh. It has to be a John Williams one, right? John Williams is hard to beat. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. Probably the GOAT. I think from a nostalgia angle, this is such an easy answer. Star Wars is hard to beat. I think I go Indiana Jones. (laughs) 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 Is that like little planes flying over the fake map? And you're like, yes. (laughs) There's a snake (laughs) on the plane. (laughs) Junior. (laughs) Junior. All right, your next number. 1125. 1125. Is it the total points scored by Paige Beckers so far in her collegiate career at UConn? Okay. She's been injured a lot. I'm really bad with this reference. Or stuff. is it the time this Monday morning that the solar eclipse will be at its peak obstruction here in the Portland area? We have a solar eclipse coming? Monday the 8th, yes. Oh. It will not, we're not directly in the path, so we won't get the We'll be total lucky if we see it. Dark uh, out. Ah, okay. Yeah. How long ago was that last one that we did where we all went out there? I don't know. The president looked at it without the glasses. Yeah. What year oh, that was, that? was 2017, wasn't what, it? Was that what kind? Was that a total eclipse? I don't know if that was a lunar eclipse Super or a eclipse? solar eclipse. Okay, that was a big deal. I remember I, when that one yes. happened. I will never forget the day, not because of the eclipse or not because Trump stupidly looked at it. <laughs> I will remember that I was told 
traffic is going to be the worst of all time. Yes. I rode your bike. I biked in from Beaverton. That's right. Nobody was on the road. <laughs> I forgot about that. You rode your bike to work from Beaverton. I did. I was trying to be biking health guy, and that was <laughs> yeah, so dumb. Uh, uh, this is a this is a story. story. I'm gonna go story. Story. That's too random. We, we get of, it uh, late at night. Stat, I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, Paige Beckers has scored 1,576 points so far through. Uh, she's in her third year. Okay. Uh, playing there, she had her year. Obviously, last year was cut short. I did not score over 300, but um, I'm stoked for that matchup. I know Angel Reese Clark is more exciting, but Beckers well, and Clark is good. Well, I think Beckers and Clark might actually match up and guard well, they one should. another. Should she guarded Juju yeah. a lot? Sounds like a law firm. So yeah, no Beckers uh, so and Clark. Yeah. Monday the eighth. Are you injured it on the job? <laughs> so Monday the eighth is a uh, solar eclipse. The path is going to go through Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, Illinois, Indiana, so kind of up and then finish up in New England and, and Mexico. They will get mm. the total dark out. 11.25 a.m. It will be its maximum eclipse here in the Portland area. Uh, NASA is saying the Northwest will see 20 to 25 percent obscuration. How long does it last for? Uh, it'll start at 10:33. It'll go till 12:19. Oh, that's a decent length. So it'll be it'll be weird looking. A little uh, bit darker, a little bit dimmer. A little bit darker, a little dimmer. Nobody so, on this show is going to see this. What's the weather supposed to be like? Why are we talking about this? I don't know. Well, and that's assuming it's we're not clouded over. Yeah, yeah exactly. Gotta, that's the problem. Next Monday, we got 57 and cloudy. Yeah, we're not going to see this. Not we're not going to be awake for it. Let's go to the next one. Not a good chance. All right. Uh, your final number is three. Is it the number of 40-point games Caitlin Clark has in NCAA tournament history? Or is it the number of feet in diameter an industrial saw blade was that came loose and nearly gored a patron at a local oh. Eugene convenience store? God. Don't know if you saw this video I or not. I saw the video. It's terrifying. Like, they just missed it. He walked into walked a in store and, like, and three seconds later. Five seconds later. later <laughs> hits, the, hits the wall, And it basically. was moving at, like, yeah. 60, 70 miles an hour. Like, it was going and a bolt came loose and it flew off whatever was holding Give it Give me together. the number again. Three? Three. three. It's three. Uh, I'm going to go stack. She's at 40. Well, I watched that video like 15 times. I would fade. <laughs> I would maybe. Dirt. No. My only thing is you do what you want to do. Yeah. I would maybe fade the stat because I wouldn't be shocked. And I'm going to dirt logic it. He tells me there's like five 40 career point games in the tournament. That's yeah. I'm going to go stat. I'm kind of leaning your way. Also, too. but three feet in diameter. Yes. It was the saw that big? it was a big size saw. Uh, three feet. Wide? I don't know how to analyze. Di I don't what was know. your guess? How many feet would you guess? Less than three? Then I say stat. I say stat. It is a stat. She has three 40-point games. That is the feet. most. <laughs> uh, it was four feet yeah. in <laughs> diameter. I would have said a foot and a half, maybe. <laughs> four feet in diameter. So basically from the middle of your chest to, to your hand. Oh, in terrifying. diameter. Oh. I mean, your body's sawed in half. You're so, yeah, dead it was this convenience store. There was road construction going on. They were probably sawing old uh, sidewalks or something, cutting up concrete, and the bolt, something came loose, and all of a sudden you see. Dude, it's Final Destination stuff. It really is. And like then, so he walks in the door, and then like three seconds behind, this thing comes flying through the park. How <laughs> there wasn't a car there that no. it hit and sawed through is amazing. And then it wedged, it stuck two feet into That's what they, yeah. the side of the store. I just saw it. I oh. mean, it's terrifying. The guy walks in and like seconds later, just right into Look the Look at how fast that flies through the Can you the imagine market. the reaction of two of the construction workers when that thing flies off the hinge? Oh, that, oh, yeah. oh, 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 ah! Like yeah. you're just, that's an immediate panic. Please don't kill somebody because mm. I'm liable for that. Mm. Terrifying stuff. Does it look like it's four feet? I would have said less than three, right? Well, I mean, the problem is the camera doesn't. You got a weird angle at it. You're just kind of. Yeah, I don't down know about this being four feet, man. I'm watching it roll. <laughs> right? It looks like the size of a. T is a tire four feet? A, I don't no, think, I don't that's, so. it. Looks like the size of a tire. Yeah, I, I'm seeing it roll. On, it rolled on the ground and then sh it yeah. like shot up. I'd say like two feet. That would be my guess. Yeah, foot and a half, two a feet. Four foot blade. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it always gets bigger as that guy gets older. <laughs> Nine foot blade. Damn near cut me in half. Uh, hell of a way to go. If that's the way you're gonna go out, there you go. Sadder story every Wednesday. Not a way I want to go out. I mean, at least it's quick. That I don't thing know was, if that is quick. No. That thing slices you in half. Dude. I don't think you die instantly from Not getting cut. Where does low. it hit you? Yeah. Do you remember it's, Saving Private Ryan? Does it catch you in the neck? You're done immediately. That saw goes like it went two feet into the thick door wall. 
Yeah. That thing's going through your body, man. It, the worst part is it probably gets wedged into his ass. Slices your head in half. You're done. Yeah. It's over. Maybe. S- see you later. Period. All right. There you go. Saturday story every Wednesday at 8.15. I got a couple other new, uh, NFL news and notes to get to. A fun uh, stat for you. We got some audio and a pleasant surprise. That is all next. But first, your swag with Sports Center. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan, Trailblazers head to Charlotte. Their road trip trudges on. They're on a 10-game losing streak, but fans perplexed tonight. They're taking on a Hornets team that's just one game behind them in the standings for the fourth worst record in the NBA in the quest for more ping pong balls. It's a 4 o'clock tip on Root Sports Plus. Blazers are one-and-a-half-point underdogs. Adam Schefter reporting uh, the Bills have agreed to trade wide receiver Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans for a 2025 second-round pick. Uh, Houston will also get some late-round picks back in return. James Stephon's hat trick putting the Winter Hawks on the verge of a sweep of the Victoria Royals. After a 6-5 win on Tuesday night, they're up three games to none. Game four tonight in Victoria, 7-0-5 faceoff. And the Oregon Ducks baseball team securing their 20th win of the season, a 7-4 victory at the Portland Pilots Tuesday night. They'll start a weekend series at UCLA on Friday. Meanwhile, second-ranked Oregon State completed a two-game sweep of Gonzaga, 13-5. Beavers will host Arizona State this weekend in Corvallis. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigard from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. Four, please. Golf in the Northwest with Jason Swigard is back. Saturdays at 8 a.m. before the Sinner and the Saint on Portland's Sports Leader, 1080 The Fan. Fred Meyer always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices. And when you download the Fred Meyer app, you can enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. Plus, you can earn fuel points to save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. So it's easy to save big. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Fuel restrictions apply. Save big during our fresh Foster Farms chicken full line sale. Select varieties or buy one, get one free with your car. Fred Meyer, fresh for everyone. Are you curious about who offers the best deals on top-rated Samsung, LG, and Sony TVs? The answer is surprising. It's not online, and it's not the warehouse clubs. The best deals on top-rated TVs are at video only. Don't believe it? Then check out the trade-in deals at video only. How about $500 for your old TV? Try doing that online. Before you buy that new TV, drop into video only. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Hey, everybody, Sprague here. Is your water heater in good condition? My friends at Three Mountains Plumbing are here to make sure your water heater is working properly. And they'll do the job for you so you have more time to do fun things. Because do you really want to use your time this spring trying to do maintenance on your water heater yourself? I know letting Three Mountains Plumbing work on my water heater saved me valuable time, and it put my mind at ease. Don't use the Internet. Let the pros handle it. Getting it serviced.
Zajin, becoming no G's in the game. This is Dirt and Spray on 1080 The Fan. All right, we'll get to the vicious battle that's going on tonight to close out the show. Did you see the skit on Jimmy Kimmel with Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg? I don't think I did, no. Very random. I saw it on the, the YouTube. It was really good. Got him to perform an operation. Jimmy Kimmel's the patient. Ah, that's a good idea. And Dre's the doctor, and he brings in Snoop because he's discovered that Jimmy Kimmel has the smallest unit he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> that's a good bit. I like that. It was pretty good. Um, let's get to this. Uh, if I were to ask you the question, when does the new year begin? What would your answer be? Uh, Labor Day weekend when football starts. That's the, that's I don't the know. start of your year, Labor Day I weekend. I don't know which, a league year? Are we talking about a calendar this year? year? I, I, when's the new year begin? January 1st. Wrong. December 31st at 11.59. <laughs> Wrong. That's last year. What are you talking okay, about? I, I don't know. Uh, Jim Harbaugh went to the podium yesterday, the new head coach of the L.A. Chargers. Always entertaining. And I just, I love Jim Harbaugh, dude. If I could sit down and interview one person, it would probably suck. As an interview, I just want to be in the same room as that guy. And just, like, what's the energy like? Is it eye, eye contact? I what? think you're nervous. I I'm think definitely you're nervous. nervous. Yeah. I'm definitely nervous. Yes. Uh, but he's a, he's an absolute character. I and think it's smelling on you like a dog. <laughs> the, the nerves. Yes. Just offer him a dip, calm him down. He's a big dip guy. Is he a dip guy? Huge dip guy. Really? Isaac and Suk have told that story years ago when he was at Stanford at the Pacto Media Day. Uh-huh. It was at the end of the day, and he was sitting down. They're like, can we have you for an interview? He's like, only if I can do it with a big dip in. And they were like, we're not on TV, you're good. And he threw in like half of a can of dip and just sat there and talked Stanford football with him. So thou minutes. shall have the dip. <laughs> it's got to have the dip with Harbaugh. Uh, he was asked, when does the new year begin? And the celebration of what happened yesterday here is Jim Harbaugh. It's like the uh, start of the new year. Happy new year. For that first day of school, just found out your wife was pregnant. Hey, we're going to have a... We're going to have a... We're going to have a child. Great. <laughs> it's locked, cocked, ready to rock. I'm just like, let's go, you know? happy to be coaching guys you know i mean uh if they got the energy to come in and 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 want to uh want to learn and train then uh, we're happy to that's our job you know so it's good to be it's good to be able to be doing your job you know i just feel like now yeah that's it's complete it's more complete now i'm Locked. I feel like a coach again, you know, <laughs> coaching players. Locked, cocked. That needs to be There's a drop. There's like nine drops that needs in that. to be a drop. That's, I mean, that's perfect. He had another one where Coaching he, guys again. He continued about the new year. He's like, some people think it's January 1st, you know, in Catholicism and, and uh, you know, for Christians, Christianity, it's the birth of Christ. For us, it's April 2nd. That's when we report for camp. Christians celebrate the new year on December 25th. <laughs> well, I don't think he was actually born on December 25th. Well, he, he wasn't. He was born no. in the spring. But That's we right. Christian, there's Christians that celebrate That's the, the new year. year. The okay. birth of Christ. Happy <laughs> New Year, everybody. Do you think he... Happy New Year! How many times does he talk without <laughs> knowing what he's going to say next? Sometimes I start a sentence and I don't know where it's going. It's your Marbar every time he opens his mouth. Got a... Got a, I, got a job. <laughs> I love that guy. Locked and <laughs> cocked. He is my favorite character in all sports. A uh, couple other quick NFL notes I want to get to. I was sh- I, shocked. I don't know if that's the right word, but good for these people. Have you followed what's going on in Kansas City right now with their stadium? Uh, they voted no. They voted it down. Yeah. So the owner of the Hunt family, is yeah. at, he wants to propose a new tax to pay for the renovations of the stadium. And everybody's like, dude, we're generating billions of dollars every year. No, they voted it down yesterday. There was a big proposition yeah, in so Missouri, it and they voted tax, it down. There's a sales tax that's been on the books, so the vote was to extend it another 40 years. Yes. And the revenues would be used. Uh, the Chiefs want to do a bunch of renovations, and the Royals want to build a new stadium. Of course they do. Um, it's not that old. It's a beautiful ballpark. So, yeah, the renovations. They want a new stadium? <laughs> Well, everybody wants a new stadium, man. Yeah, didn't they just build that thing? I no, they the renovated I mean, it. Been around for a while. They, but renovated they renovated it about 10, 12 years ago. Oh, how yeah, how dare they? I mean, it's just decrepit. How yeah. could you play in that? Possibly only forty percent of the local voters yeah. supported the extension of it. Good, so good, good. I was pleasantly yeah. surprised by so that. So they man. were like, uh, and I guess pay for they that knew s it. yourself. Our well, media friends have, hated this. They didn't have their really? crap together with the plan. They didn't. The rollout was horrible. Their explanation, they weren't fully ex. You know, the I mean, they just think of, they can show up. We're the Chiefs. Yeah. You're going to vote for this. That's their thought process. What, what's, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't mean to get in the weeds here. What's the explanation? Hey, this tax is an increase. 
we pay for the stadium. There's no, no it's other. No, simply extending a tax that was on the books. Okay, so what's yeah. the explanation? It didn't sound like they, much well, of an they explanation. Well, they were people were asking in public forums about kind of okay, what are the plans? What it's going to go to? And they weren't complete when they yeah. were starting the campaign. What it in the was, stadium will it pay? It for? was very nebulous as to how much and what was going to be there. Uh, the Royals are proposing a new stadium in a different part of town. Uh, the backlash there was there's a lot of young, independent, new, thriving small businesses that it would have uprooted, and that was the backlash there. That's a, such a good location because the two stadiums are right next to each other. It's like a it's a ballpark heaven. The base, baseball stadium and the football stadium is parking lots all over the place. Like moving that would be incredibly dumb. Um, one quick fun stat for you: Do you care to guess? Now it's a little misleading, but I still found it interesting. Um, in the last 34 years in the National Football League, how many quarterbacks drafted in the first round have become a first-team All-Pro? Hmm. So in back the last, to 1990. In the last 34 years, back to 1990. Eight. Okay. Five. Four. Wow. Now, this is somewhat like some you've had got like Joe Burrow. Like there's been good guys who have just haven't been named a first-team All-Pro yet. Your list of first round picks that Andrew, ended up being all first team all pro. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning has like like twenty five percent of them. Andrew Luck. Uh, Andrew Luck. No, he was never mm. a first team all pro. So he's an example of this of like a good yeah. quarterback, good career, but just didn't. Because there's that only one. This is only going one. to the Pro Bowl. This is the one, one first team all pro. The other ones, Mahomes is the other Rogers, obvious one. Yeah. Rogers, no. Really? He's never been. A, I guess he's never been he's a first run, team like, all the pro. MVP three times, yeah, four times. You run into years with, where it's Brady wow. or it's Manning or whatever. Okay. Or, you know, in modern times, Patrick Mahomes. The other two kind of surprised me. Matt Ryan did it the year they went to the Super Bowl. He was oh, the first okay. team all pro. I would track. Won the MVP that year. And Cam Newton the year he won the MVP. Very fair. first. Those are the only four first round NFL quarterbacks drafted who have been a first team all pro. Yeah, I mean, I, we've highlighted it a million times. Like, I just don't. What I'm more curious about is this. You and I could get into a room with general managers and execs and analytic teams, and they could talk about things that we don't comprehend, right? Mm -hmm. you, we agree that. Mm -hmm. Couldn't we conversely just look at them and go, you know the history of this says you're not going to succeed with this pick, so maybe move and get other value, right? Yeah, maybe do. I mean, the Bears did it perfectly. They had the number one pick last year, and they traded it, and what did it turn into this year? The number one. <laughs> I, I think you can make an argument. Everybody's like, they're going to get Roma Dunes at night. Maybe they will. I would love the pick. I would look at trading it. Give me more stuff. I'll take yeah. a later first and an additional like third or fourth. Yeah. And I'll keep I'll keep getting as much stuff as I possibly can. I think the Chargers are easily and the Patriots. Should I'll give be. you the take. Those two teams, I don't think are going to be in the top five. Should be. I think you're going to trade the hell out of there and go benefit from those rookie scale contracts. And and the answer for them, if we said this to them, would be, well, we have the coach, and our coach really believes. And I'll say, are you sure? Because <laughs> Kyle Shanahan, I would have thought, also believed. And Trey Lance. And I don't think he did, and that seemed like a forced situation that ended very poorly and should have punished them. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man. It's The history of the league is telling you what to do and what not to do, and the Jimmy Johnson – you know, draft value scale charts that we have, they're all right there outlining what value is and what to do and when not to do things. And these teams just continue to go, ah, we're different. Give me Jaden Daniels. He'll work this time. Give me J.J. McCarthy with a top five pick. This yeah. one will pan out. Yeah. Yeah. History tells you something pretty solid, but nobody learns from I, history. This I, is why I'm a history buff. You got to learn from history. I can't wait for Kevin O'Connell to turn in the draft room to his offensive coordinator <laughs> and say, what do you think of J.J. McCarthy? Yeah. And then I'll go, oh, wait, he's not here. We suspended him for three weeks for having a Dewey. <laughs> ROC can't even be at the draft. <laughs> Things are going great. Uh, a vicious battle commences tonight. We'll close up next on The Fam.
The metropolis shining like who on top of this? This People is Dirt and Sprague on 1080, the fan. A couple of the quick notes before I get to the Battle of the Titans tonight. Uh, Eric Musselman to USC do anything for either of you two? Yeah, I, I, I was talking about this with Danny yesterday, and he had said he thinks it's, it's going to be Musselman. And I, Musselman's a good coach, but blow some smoke up your butt. You like that move? He's a fiery guy. Can't be worse yeah. than what infield was the last two years. Good recruiter. Good recruiter. He had success at Nevada, so yep. I know he oh, okay. knows the West Coast. Nevada or Nevada? Nevada. 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 Uh, speaking of USC, too, by the way, Bronny James is entering the NCAA transfer portal. Yeah. I wonder if Oregon is involved in any way. The odds, according to... Uh, well, does he want to follow Enfield to SMU? That They're a candidate. So according to sportsbetting.ag, uh-huh. they have the odds on this. Ohio State's the favorite, followed by Duquenze. Big fan of Duquenze. Oregon is in third. You disrespectful little <laughs> twerp. You, SM- no, you, you <laughs> clearly missed it. He actually thought it was pronounced Duquenze. <laughs> now I'm just calling the them. Show. I'm calling them Duquenze now. And now, yeah, it's a he's... way cooler name than Duquesne. Way Duquenze is way cooler than Duquesne. Uh, Oregon is You're in not fourth. Never going to be welcomed in Pittsburgh. <laughs> no, friend. I will not. I don't really have a desire to go to Pittsburgh. Ah, maybe a Pirates game. SMU fourth, San Diego State fifth, and then Duke, and from then on out. He's tweeted out pictures of himself in a uh, Duke uniform and an Ohio State uniform. Uh, you know, Duke is obviously a brand. I can uh, get it. Yeah, I totally get it. A lot of this smells like his dad because his dad repeatedly <laughs> says, I would have gone to Duke. But then he also says, I would have gone to Ohio State. And he grew up most of his life in Cleveland. So, you know, yeah. go back home. I get it. Go to a small college town. That would be get out. I'm glad he's getting out of L.A. That's that was a lot, dude. Celebrities at your game. You're in Los Angeles. Like, get away from home. Go live the college life for a year or two. He's not ready for the NBA. He's a three. I've always I said this going into it. He, he was never going to be a one and done. No. He's not good enough. He's a three, four year college guy. Yeah. Who probably gets picked in the second round and is a two way player and maybe eventually finds his way as being a good role guy for a team. Which like that's his career co- to me. That's a really good career. That's a great career. How many kids career. did Michael Jordan put in the league? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're just fathering Pippin kids. Um, so let's get to the vicious battle tonight. Are we glued to this? Are we locked to this? How are we feeling about this? You won't be glued, but I'm yeah. telling you, it's a massive game. The Portland Tra- your Portland Trailblazers. Yeah. So or- is it a is it a tank off? It I is mean, a tank is it, off. Is, are, I believe are- Danny and Dusty called it a suck off. Okay. Oh, okay. I like those. Uh they're in Charlotte taking on the Hornets. <laughs> They're a game back ahead. How do you define it? I don't know. A game back. The Blazers have nine they're nineteen and fifty six. The Hornets are 18 and 57. Yes. You got to lose tonight. You have yes. to. You got to lose tonight. You have to lose tonight. Have to lose tonight. Charlotte is playing not a single person. They're of sitting note. everybody tonight. Even Brandon Miller's not playing. Who, let's just let Delano Banton take 37 no. shots tonight. No, no. He, he might win good? you a game. He's too good. You let, need to have him on a minutes let's restriction. Let's play 48. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set a new plus minus record tonight, dude. Sure. Cooper Flag is in town soon for the U.S. Uh, Hoop Summit. I'm going to go to the practice. I want to see him in person. He's on McDonald's game last night. You have to be worse than you are this year, next year. And if you're going to do this thing properly, this is, so this is good training. You have to You yeah. have to lose tonight. Have to. There's not a world where Aiton should be playing 20 minutes. <laughs> lose the game. Charlotte is a slight favorite. Minus one and a half. Good. Lose. That's just the home court advantage right there. <laughs> uh, pull question up. How is, do you as a Vegas odds maker even put a line on this I, game? I don't. You, was Chauncey Billups a Hall of Fame basketball player? No. I mean, everybody's a Hall of Fame basketball player. I heard they're inducting you for your thank you for your Park Rose career. I would actually, I'd be, <laughs> I'd cry. I'd, I'd, <laughs> you're gonna thank all the coaches that cut you. There you go. Good little show. If you missed it, go check the podcast. 1080thefan.com. Add Dirt and Spring and at 1080thefan. Thanks everybody for watching on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and like the video. We will talk to you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Calling us next. Listening to 1080 the Fan. Just a quick with BetQL. The women's final four is set, and the world's eyes are going to be on UConn versus Iowa, or in other words, Paige Beckers versus Caitlin Clark. And while